Wag wag lids, before this amazing episode of Have A Word, we need to tell you about our patron, which is one of the best patrons in world comedy. We are officially the fastest growing Patreon on the planet at the minute. Yeah. Fastest growing Patreon, and that's because for just three quid, five quid, or ten quid a month, you get an extra episode a week, early access to these public episodes, and access to the entire back catalogue of all the Patreon stuff we've done in the past, which includes... The specials, the ghost hunts... The lockdown lock-ins, which are now fucking legendary. Some of the live shows, it's the best money you will ever spend. The roast event oh, is yeah. going on Patreon oh, yeah. early in March. You get to see that. You also get early access to my tour tickets, Dan's tour tickets, live show tickets. And to be honest with you, live show tickets don't really last very long on Patreon. So if you're not a patron, you're probably not being able to come to any of them that we've put on recently. You're only going to get to be there if you sign up at patreon.com slash have a weird pod and join the 10,000 strong army of fucking <laughs> lunatics. Megan. Wag Wag Leads, you're listening to the funniest podcast in the game with Adam, Dan, Sensei Kal, and Finn. This is the one and only Have a Word. Brought to you by Manscaped.com, the very best in below the belt men's grooming. Go, Ed, get on me. Hey, me and Carl got off of the threesome by an Eastern European woman last night. He's the wrong wingman for that shit, isn't he? He's the we, wrong, we, he's defo the wrong wingman for that. We politely like, declined. You could you could have a tab- league table of dirty reprobates. Mm. You don't want two dirty because you could have to see a dick. Mm. But like he's de- he's not in there, is he? No. Old fucking steady commitment, Carl. She was hey, listen, the. Uh, she offered me. Yeah. She oh, was, did he she come to you first and then he was the adult? No, it was sort of like it. It was more <laughs> implied, wasn't it? I mean, she definitely said that at one point and then took it back. Hang on. She implied a threesome. No, listen. So here's what happened. Last night, we were driving back from the stag do. So we've been on Paul Smith's stag do. Yeah. In Scotland. Last night was just fizzling out. We hadn't drank, so I was like, let's get home. I can hear you've been on a stag do. In my voice? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, Barry. Adam said, oh, I've been, <laughs> I've been up near Falkirk. It's literally cigars and whiskey. Um, oh, I was good, you know. Where did this fucking lady of the night come in? Oh, so <laughs> she was the receptionist at the Holiday Inn. <laughs> in, in, um, where was it? Lancaster. Lancaster. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Have you been offered a threesome? Or have you just been af- like, offered a, like an, a disabled access room? <laughs> no. You're going to need handlebar to... Uh, she wants it. So we did? got there. We got there at like four o'clock in the morning. We were so tired. It was dangerous to carry on driving. We, we were doing... Because I've been in Jordan Adam's car this week. We were doing relays. Half an hour each. I was driving. Hang on. Have you driven today... Yeah. From Lancaster. Yeah. yeah. You fucking mongs. How are you this late from Lancaster? We missed like, the exit by 12 miles. Yeah. You Midday we were meant to be here. You got in at fucking 10 past one. But I was like, yeah, cool. You've driven down from Falkirk. You're hungover. You've driven from Lancashire. Yeah, but we got there at 5 a.m. It's one county up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You can do that journey from here to Lancaster. It's an hour and 10 minutes. It's an hour and 25, actually. Oh, yeah, it's a, especially if you miss the dancing in the moonlight. <laughs> bloody hell, we're in Coventry. We, we missed the exit by 12 miles. That's why we were late. We would have been here for half 12, which is what time I told you we'd get here when I woke up this morning. Bullshit. You missed one junction and you're 40 minutes late. No, we Give missed a 12-mile fu- junction. 12 miles? We missed up by 12 miles. So you could have well, well, come back again. That's 24. Oh, 24. Yeah, yeah lad. And that's about half an hour, innit? And that's exactly how late we were. You see? You fucking tit. Yeah, we were meant to be here at midnight. Lads, we're going to have to make it half 12. Midnight. Oh, no, it does. Midnight. Oh, lost all authority. Yes. You said midnight. Can't get said it, it wrong. On fucking time to save your dick. Tell me the story. So we got there, and it's <laughs> four o'clock in the morning, and she's like sort of, she looked like happy. That we were like yeah. there, do you know what I mean? And she was Easterny. E. Yeah. And the computers were down. <laughs> she was Easterly. I've never heard anyone use the phrase Easterny. She's very Easterny. The computers were all down. So she couldn't get get our room key sorted. And then she goes, She definitely said, if it doesn't happen in a moment, you'll have to come to back to my and fuck me. And I went, What? I heard it. And she went, If if it she goes, I'm just saying if it doesn't work, you might have to stay in my house. And I went, Hmm. She definitely said, do you want to fuck me? Yeah. It is raining outside. It is very cold. Do you want to see my pussy? <laughs> That's what she was saying. Right. 
So honestly, this it, all the, happened. <laughs> the problem is, and I'm loving this story, and I'm so glad we're opening with it. This story is so good. I'm over the missing the junction. <laughs> But you're making it you're making it sound like a gay German man. And that's more <laughs> believable. If it was like, hello, welcome. Welcome to Lancaster. Oh. My name is Gunther. I co the computer's down. It's covered in my jizz. I've drowned the computer in my man love. You can't have she to just come kept back to mine. stuff under yeah. her breath. No, oh, didn't. your room is very hot. Get out your dick. We heard it all. I swear to God, she would. Hang she on, was making got... idle conversation and then making sexual like threats. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Weather's nice today. She was like, "Oh, so where have you? Come is it raining, Jizz? Mm. Yeah. Like, so where have yeah, you? Yeah. Where, where do you come from today?" And we were like, "Scotland." She goes, "Oh, it's very cold up in Scotland. Who wants to see my tits?" <laughs> we were like, "What?" She goes, "It's very cold in Scotland." <laughs> the problem with I'm loving the story. <laughs> But you get carried away and then you make it silly, silly. And I can't, I don't she, know what to believe. She was a, so, oh, you come from Scotland. Why don't you suck on my pussy? Yeah. That's, Is that what she we said? Were there. And we were and going, what? Right in there. We were going, what? And she's going, what? We were like, You're going to need a bigger room, like a disabled access room, because I'm going to break your dick off. I'm going to fuck you so hard you'll be disabled. And she wasn't being that sort of on the nose. Oh, <laughs> she wasn't. She was <laughs> that's too on the nose. More subtle than. Oh, it's cold up there. Do you want to suck on my tits? More <laughs> subtle like yeah, that. Yeah, but the second half she'd whisper. So she'd be like, very, oh. very cold in Scotland. Oh, suck my tits. <laughs> and we'd be like, what? She'd go, were nothing. You still pissed when you got in at Lancaster? Pissed oh. on tiredness. We yeah. didn't drink yesterday. All right, cool. Yeah. And Everton won for the first time right. in what feels and like four decades. Everton won. And a woman was like, oh my God, you're worried about rele relegation. Let me fuck you. Yeah. I'll make it better. Yeah, she's at, she's, oh. I like Liverpool. I've been there many times before. Do I want oh, to see my asshole? Oh, Alan say Maximum did not score. I will suck your dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Do you yeah, want yeah, to touch yeah. my asshole with your thumb? <laughs> thumb my bum hole. Thumb hole? It was weird and it took. It sounds weird. It took. <laughs> it sounds weird. It took forty-five minutes. No exaggeration for that to check us in at four a.m. I I think we've worked out why old fucking whatever Svetlana is doing the night shift because this this would be inappropriate with families turning up to check in. <laughs> oh my goodness, you have kids. You must have fucked really hard to make them. <laughs> Want to make babies in my pussy? <laughs> Oh, your wife is crying. I use her tears at lube. It took so long. That was dark. <laughs> and Joe, when you, it took so long. We were literally, if we had a kite on driving, we wouldn't be, we'd be dead. Yeah. We were right. so tired. Like we weren't falling asleep at the wheel, but we were like, yeah, realizing we weren't concentrating. I mean, you know, early afternoon, you've missed the junction. Late night, you could have just kept driving. <laughs> fucking hell, lad, we're in the water. You've driven <laughs> over the fucking white cliffs of Dover, my bed. <laughs> God, I was listening to Sam Fender. Woo! <laughs> oh. Yeah, she was very keen, this woman. She she <laughs> was. Yeah, she's out it. The old fucking night shift cock gobbler. <laughs> oh my God, she sounds fucking amazing. <laughs> Laura's going to be like, where are you going at two in the morning? Lancaster, <laughs> Lancaster. <laughs> but we were playing this game in bed when we got there. <laughs> And we couldn't sleep because we were screaming, and laughing. <laughs> oh, it's cold she outside. Definitely oh, said oh. the first one. She definitely said she goes, "If it doesn't work in mine, you'll have to stay in mine and fuck me." And I went, "What?" So I'm just saying, if it doesn't work, you have to stay in mine and fuck me. But she definitely said and fuck me. She, de she. I mean, hundred percent. Oh, hundred percent. She was, she was attractive as well. Was she? The little known attractive night goblin at Lancaster Travel Lodge? Did you say? Holiday Inn. Holiday. Whole Holiday Inn. <laughs> the whole Holiday see, Inn, that's what it was called. You don't want to see the travel lodge. We're like, ah, <laughs> can I box you in with my tits? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I can't with my ass. Would you like breakfast? It's 12 95 Oh, we'd just been in the hospital before that as well. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? We'd genuinely just been in the hospital. We'd been in the hospital and- Why didn't I come Scotland? to this stag do? It sounds fucking epic. I've not heard one thing We're about doing the, the story day. in reverse as well. Yeah. I've just, I've just heard Miss Junction's a dirty old fucking Polish lady. Who sounds way German? Easty. She was Easty. East German. If I had to stay, if I had to stake yeah. me life on it, <laughs> she's a bit of an old, bit old school. Yeah. If I had to stake me life on it, I would say Transylvania. Transylvania, and that's in what country? It's yeah. There we go. Oh, it's near. Is it near Pittsburgh? <laughs> what country? Ah, oh, he's gonna. Is it gonna go? Holland. 
Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> famous, the famous Dutch vampires. Strop, strop. <laughs> that the girl shall be. Sure, yeah. She's not ready. Wait, what? Transylvania? Ma- not Romania. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, she's fucking Romanian. Yeah, yeah. It just got to be like a little she, bit more she like. She had a short black bob and glasses on. Oh, you know 100% like? Romanian. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a vampire who, eh? Yeah. 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 I yeah. <laughs> love it. The things we agree with each other on. Yeah. Yeah. Classic. Grab, classic grab one of those things slide. as well. <laughs> and a <call> vagina. <laughs> Big vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about this. We had a full rugby an team here last night. An accordion. An accordion. Yeah. Yeah. She had an accordion. I'm not, she must be absolutely battered. If if two random knobheads turn up at five and she's like, oh, finally, some dick to check in. Glug, 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 glug. <laughs> Have you got your passport? Don't need it. Have your jizz in my eye. Like, yeah. No, I'm. Uh, she asked she me to write great. down my name and phone number. She did. I'm like, I'm not even no, and she did. And it, it wasn't on it. Oh my god, you've run out of Byro. You know, it was mad. It wasn't on like an official holiday. Um, post it note. It was on a. It was on a fucking post it note. As in, she's talking my name and phone number and cock size in inches. Now, granted, the computer wasn't working, so it might have been for that. But I'm, I'm waiting on a text. Like, yeah. It's the way she. <laughs> the computer not working is one thing, but if you take the post-it note and then sniff it, that's a bit suspicious. Write <laughs> like, your number there. Oh, thank you. She rubbed you. it on a pussy. Oh. She rubbed it on a fanny. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you, room five one seven. Oh my god, that's actually the room. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's mad. He was there, then. Oh, fucking rumors going around, mate. But yeah, we were... holiday in Lancaster, southbound. <laughs> we just been to hospital. I'm going down, down, baby. Just been to hospital in uh, f- in Sterling, Fourth Valley Royal Hospital at yeah. the A and E. Sterling, yeah, uh, Falkirk. Falkirk more oh yeah, more Falkirk. Yeah, yeah, stupid yeah. of me. Because uh, Phil Chapman smashed his knee carrying beer to the car for us. Yeah, because there was a lot of leftover ale, and there wasn't going to be much room in the cars coming back. Uh, they were like, "Will you take some of the beers home?" Because I had it was just me and him in my car. Yeah, and Phil was carrying it to the car, slipped and. Sh- like he thought he'd shattered his kneecap. It Tom t- Segura himself. He put all his weight onto his knee. All and it turns it. out he's dislocated his kneecap. His oh, no. kneecap is currently oh, no. like behind his knee. Behind his knee, yeah. Like his kneecap wasn't. It weird. There. It does move weird. The kneecap, doesn't it? If you get it in a like he was touching his knee, that was good, and then realised the other one wasn't there. Ay ay ay. And he went. Oh, he went see through. I've never seen anyone like because Phil Chapman is pale. So, he's pale anyway, isn't he? But. He's so sure of himself, Phil. He's always like sort of no, this is what I think, and it's like, and he was so. He looked like a child, like a rabbit in head. Like he, he went into proper shock, shaking, and he was see through. And he's like, uh, what, 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 what do we do? Do we go home? Or? So we got him to that hospital. We were gonna try and get him home to put him in the hospital in Liverpool, but we thought if he like sort of takes a funny turn on the way home, and we have to drop him at Carlisle Hospital, then he's stuck in Carlisle. Yeah, a good if job. you have to stop in Lancaster, he might get his kneecap sucked off. <laughs> Oh, welcome. You're disabled. You can't get away from it. It's God. a fucking good job he wasn't in the car. Why? What happened? We just being fucking tired. Imagine we got him in the hotel room. Oh, yeah. It's a good point. Um, it? Is he all right? Is he still in Scotland then? Yeah. Uh, he is, yeah. He, Convalescing? He's being uh, x rayed now. It's a dislocated kneecap. Fucking hell. That's 10 to 12 weeks out, isn't it? A hell of a stag, do. I bet. Yeah. Stayed in a castle, plain castle. Uh, in between Stirling and Falkaya. What do you mean, Plain Castle? That's what it's called. It's called Plain Castle. Oh, plain, like as in, plane. like, as in plain. <laughs> You've changed. Just a fucking boring castle. <laughs> Dead player. It wasn't haunted. I like more turrets, me. It wasn't haunted, like the ones we're used to. Yeah. Um, Shout out Ghost Hunt 2. Very popular. Patreon.com slash have a word pod. So there was a lot of people there. I'm not going to say who was doing what, name-wise. But there was a comically big bag of drugs. Yeah. A it, bag of drugs. A no, bag of no, my It was a bag. Was. It was like a prop. Right. Like, it was as yeah. big as that. Yeah. And like, filled halfway up right. with MDMA. Like a prop. Oh, God. Like, if you made drugs for the stage show. And that was just Danny Max. <laughs> <laughs> no. That, the, jo- the joke was there, guys. He do- Danny do Max is the, one of the definite doesn't do drugs. The good good number of like those lads that don't do that stuff. You're not yeah. asked about it. You're not asked about it. No. Danny's... I mean, I live with Danny. He was always dead sound about me doing drugs, but I was like, oh, it's basically, he was like, you off your tits? So I was like, yeah. And he'd never, he was never a dick about it. Yeah. But uh, so, so what happened? Because at my stag do, there was the haves and have nots. Yeah. And I said to everyone that was doing it, do us a favor. My dad's here. 
my uncle Robert's here, and there's other people who aren't into it. There's a couple of teachers. They don't need, like, not that teachers don't do it, but I just, so I was like, you can do it, but if you ever, just go to a, a room and d let. Oh, there was rooms. Don't let them know. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was so room. genuinely, Kate Mulgrew. Came there was a smack room. After, oh, was there, right? Yeah. She came back and she was like, I've only just worked out that everyone was high. Because we did such a good job. She thought, oh, no, no, no. It was very apparent that everyone was high. <laughs> right. It's MDMA. You can't First cover night, MDMA. The only two people with their top on was Carl and Danny McLaughlin. I have my top off. Rob. Is I'll that, say his name. Rob Thomas. Is that, is that drugs? That's every live show we've done recently. <laughs> like, tops off isn't drugs, is it? Well, no. So, well, so, some of us had our tops off without doing drugs. Right. And some of them had their tops off because they were on oh, drugs. Oh, right. Okay, cool. Yeah, where Rob was just drunk and nearly sexually assaulted me. There's a picture of it. Rob Thomas. Look at this picture. We'll slide this in. You're really going to like this. you know this, what? I think if Rob Thomas wants to sexually assault you, oh, it was, I'm not sure you're going to do much 40 about 40 minutes to stop him. Oh, God. Yeah, and he's wet at this point. <laughs> wet. Like, not moist. You Like, I hope that's in right there. It is. The zo can we can screenshot the zoom in? At it's in. Holy shit, He is Carl. soaking wet. You're a victim. Yeah, and he was chasing me around the room. Yeah, that was night one. It night always goes big the first night, doesn't it? Oh, it was chaos. Yeah. And then... Uh, How many rooms? Um, It was a castle. So, so there were 17 of us, and everyone, apart from Binti, who had his own room, was sharing a room. So there was okay. nine rooms. Yeah, maybe. nice. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, on night one, in the mix, in the middle of everyone getting hammered and doing MDMA, uh, there was a carvery. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a good one as well. Fantastic. I'm not joking. There's certain things that never need to be fucking combined, do they? MDMA and Carvery. <laughs> MDMA <laughs> and Carveries. No, you want to see I that. Mean, yeah. Oh, my God. There was lots of dessert left over, put it that way. <laughs> How much Yorkshire pud can you handle when you're <laughs> off your tits on MDMA? So that was night one. That was very fun. And then... Just uh, music, chatting, running yeah. around, having... Was there a swimming pool? Was it... No what, swimming pool. Just a fuck around. Yeah. In Falkirk. House party. Which is a yeah, massive a castle house, house party. party. <laughs> there are no swimming pools in Falkirk. That's an album name, though. Yeah. Day two was the Highland Games in the morning. Um, <laughs> and you've got to tell him what Fred said. I don't know if he wants to turn it into a bit, but... Uh, he might turn it into a bit, but Fre Freddy made me scream laughing, so I felt really bad for Freddy. Because we're doing Highland Games, so it's like shot put. Um, tug of war, sack race. Tug of war, stuff like that. Caber toss. So me and Rob Thomas were captains and had to pick. Play, you know, like when you do captains and you pick. And Freddie was picked last because... Because look at him. Well. Um, and he couldn't have been less interested in the games. He was shit at all of them. And I... You know when I lose it laughing... Because later that night, he was like, no, it was last night, he goes, those Highland Games yesterday, I fucking hated it. I was like, why? He was like, because I just hate, like, comp like being competitive for the sake of it. He's like, watching you and, because me and Rob Thomas were captains and screaming at each other. He's like, watching you and Rob Thomas scream at each other over who can throw a welly the furthest. <laughs> it's one of the stupidest welly throw things. Welly one of the games. <laughs> I don't get the thinking. What do you mean? I don't get the thinking. Like, if Freddie was not into any sports, yeah. I could almost see the thinking. It kind of, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not slagging off sport, I'm into sport. But if you can get dead into your team beating another team, yeah. and you're sat on your fucking couch, how can you not get into your two mates having a Barney about welly throwing? Because he was shit at it. Right. All right, okay. So it was like, why am I he, I was screaming, laughing. Because it, like, it was fun, the, the Highland Games, but when we first walked into the garden that it was in, it looked... Pathetic. <laughs> it was a garden with bunting. He, he put, Lower League Highland Games. Yeah. He'd yeah. put bunting all around the garden. Oh, who, right? Rob? No, the fella who owns oh, the right. castle, right? Um, He was running the games, the owner of the castle. Like was the just, shop put, he literally just picked up a big stone off the floor and was like, right, we're going to throw this. It was like he was making it up. It was fun. It was great, but it was like he was making it up. We did a haggis and spoon race, so we got given a big fucking ladle. And he gave us a haggis to put in it. You know, like an egg and spoon race at school. So it was that. Good. Because you're in Scotland and they eat haggis. He knew that, didn't Don't he? Have <laughs> he fucking knew that. It's clever. Um, yeah, there was archery. There was... Um, With proper bows and arrows. Oh, yeah. that was great. Compound crossbows. Not 
Um, compound bows, not compound crossbows. bows, not crossbows. Ha- Listen, I love Freddy, but how could you not be like, that sounds great? So we're all hung up. This is the day after MDMA comical bag, the morning after. Right. Everyone's in the bin. We, I had no sleep. I was wearing eyeliner, and we went and did archery on my stag do on the second, like classic Saturday morning. Got there Friday, got messed up. Saturday morning, we were in a, a forest doing archery on the Saturday morning. I think you just got to get into it. Well, we did, though. We did get into right. it. Right. So... It was fun. It was very, very fun. And then we all went and had a little chill. Um, and then the plan for that night was to go and watch the Liverpool game in Stirling City Centre. And it is a city. I thought it was a town. It's a city. It's got a it's university. Is, historic it Castle, I think, Stirling, isn't it? It's very um, st- strategically important back in the day. I don't know how I know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> it was a big battle. Oh, I, I read, uh, I read Mary, Ch- Mary, um, fuck me, Mary Queen of Scots. Yeah, there's a battle of bastards or something. The Battle of Bastards. We did learn about that. Famous. Began with a B, Battle Chuck or something. Battle, Battle of the Chuckle Brothers. Bannock Burn. They had a straight now. That was it, yeah? There? Yeah. Well done. Oh, there is some some Scottish listeners going, what the fuck? Well, apparently they shit on us in that battle. Right. So well in. Um, well, <laughs> how did that look, work out long term? <laughs> Devolution. Found a sports bar. Um... The ones who wanted to watch the footy stayed in the sports bar, and a few others wanted whiskey, so they went to Molly Malone's little Irish pub nearby. Uh, Sounds great. Watched the Liverpool game, then we went and met them in Molly Malone, so we're all in the Irish pub. And then we decided we wanted to go to the only nightclub in <laughs> Sterling. Literally the club. On a Wednesday? Uh, it was stupid. But it was, it was the, that's the busiest night of the week in Sterling. All right, cool. Because it's bit, full of students. Bu- like busy, though. Not like, oh, it's busy for a small town or a city. Fucking ram. So it looked like a news agent. You know, like a sh- tiny little news agent. There's just one, like one person. It looks like a front door. No bigger than that wall behind you. Right? And there's a massive queue for it. So Rick Carr, who was with us, and he's a uh, doorman. As like, he, he's an actor and a, a comedian, but he does... He's nails. Yeah. yeah but he what was, did he just play in... Um, he's in uh, Brassic. 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 He played yeah. like a bare knuckle boxer, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. And he looks like one. Um, fucking nails shout out to Rick because he listens to this as well and he's, he's hey, fucking Rick, great right. um, I hope you're well regards to your family but he goes over <laughs> to the security guard because he can speak security guard do you know what I mean <laughs> come on he's right though right you know, hello we have some friends <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get them in your tiny little hole of a club so he goes over and he's that was yeah. what it looked like yeah, they basically do the hacker at each other. 17, lad. So he goes over and he's like, look, mate, um, just wondering whether it, there's 17 of us, whether it's worth us queuing to get in. Because, you know, we're not students. We're obviously not students. And the fella goes, uh, it was fully sold out, mate. Uh, why is he even here? And he goes, oh, it's me mate, stag do, Paul. And he went, is that Paul Smith? <laughs> yes, yeah. that's when it works out. We were in. Then. So the security guy goes, go to another bar for 15 minutes and then come back and we'll let you in. So there's still a big, massive queue. And me, Rick and Paul walk straight to the front and had everyone behind us. Um, the security guard's a listener to this as well. Uh, Hi, boys. So he's like, right, yeah, go in. I hope it was Bannock Burn. <laughs> so we, we go into the club. Uh, we take all 17 of us with us. At first, the guy was like, don't make these pay. These are fine. And I, the woman went, how many of you is there? And I said, 17. And he went... Make 10 of them pay. <laughs> right? So it was like, I just paid it. I couldn't be arsed with everyone doing yeah. it all that. Yeah. So then we get in the, the club. It is full of 18 to 20 year olds yeah. who all knew who me, Carl, Paul Smith, all of us, like, like they're Have a Word fans, they're Hot Water fans. It was chaos. It was chill. But the best. In small dresses. It was. <laughs> But you know what? I know what you mean, but it sounded terrible. <laughs> That's what it was, though. Yeah, apparently uh, Sterling University, they're uh, allowed in at 11. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fun. The security, the security guard had seen that I'd just gone, right, I'll just pay. And he came come over to me and give me a bottle of tequila. I was like, this is for you, lads. Just give... just Because he saw you being a good mate. Yeah, he was like, this is for you. Just, just share it with the stag. Um, mate, I'm, now I'm gutted I didn't come. Oh, it was and now so, got, you've, so, so good. At what, one the, point, what was the nightclub called? Do you remember? Fubar. F U B. Shout out like the brand. Yeah. At one point, um, one I can't remember who came over to me. It might have been Chapman. 
and he went, uh, the DJ wants a word with you. So I was like, what? He goes, the DJ wants to talk to you. So I went over to the DJ, he's like, have a word. <laughs> like, yeah, he goes, fucking great. Like, what song do you want on next? So I got to choose the next few songs that he mixed. It was fucking great. What did you go for? Uh, so fresh and so clean. So fresh and so clean, clean. Yeah. Um, old, old outcast. Bit of outcast, yeah. I got so drunk. We all did, but oh so drunk. God. I don't remember getting back to the castle. Um, when we, we got back to the castle, uh, me and Rick, by the way, in the toilet, me and Rick Carr. That sounds so good. Me I'm <laughs> so jealous. <laughs> oh my God, I got an invite. Me and Rick went up to the toilets because uh, Rick looks like the doorman. I was like, it's the head doorman here, standing by the door. And I was banging on cubicles going, come on, lads, the game's up. I know you got Lemo in there. And all like the students are coming out going, oh, I'm sorry. Going, give the Lemo. Going, I haven't got it. I was like, the head doorman's here. And Rick was just standing there like that. And everyone was just running out the toilet. What was really funny, actually, on the sports bar. Scared children. Yes, yeah, sick. So Paul's bride-to-be, Laurie, her brother was with us, Jack. And for a oh, laugh, that good-looking devil. Yes. Jesus Christ. Um, he When we were in the sports bar, just for a laugh, he went and stood on the door and was IDing and rejecting people, just yep. deciding who got to come into the sports bar. For no it. reason whatsoever, just... No, not tonight, mate, sorry. Just sending people away. <laughs> oh, we've got enough gingers. <laughs> but it's full... It's cause it's stu- <coughs> pub golf, students, lads in fucking shirts that don't fit them. And we're all a group of 20-year-old scouts, confident lads. We just took the town over. It was chaos. When we got back to the castle, so several of the children had made it back. <laughs> there, was Good a, on him. there was a 10-year-old there. I'm not asked. Uh, Do you know what his name is? He listens. Oh, shout out. All those people who were like, I reckon I could tag along here. Just bobbing around like, who the fuck is number 18? Hello? Well, he was there till 5 o'clock the next afternoon. So... Th- when what, we got, we got back, ledge. we got back to the castle. I'm hammered, and obviously I don't do drugs, so I just went straight to bed. Carl was already in bed. He got back about fifteen minutes before me. I was. I had a full blooded. bag of balsamic vinegar and caramel, caramelized <laughs> onion sensations, and then went to bed. Big, big bag of MDMA. <laughs> big bag of sensations. <laughs> Two very different stag do's. Uh, went to bed. We could barely sleep, but we did sleep because we were drunk. Because everyone else was still up. We get up the next day at what twelve o'clock. Uh, I got up a bit before you. The a party started at six a.m. Started downstairs because they got the drugs out. Because yeah. we they got home, mellowed a little bit, and then blasted the music and got back on it at six a.m. So we went clay pigeon shooting yesterday afternoon and got back. And when we got back, they were still up doing drugs from the day before. Yeah, with oh, no, stragglers. I'm, no, I'm not jealous because <laughs> I can't. There was some see through people. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to pod for fucking ages. Last night's whiskey tasting was mellow. Yeah, yeah. were they there though? Yeah, everyone was there. there. Just all the refugees from the bag of they, MDMA. Oh, uh, were they? Did they make it to the whiskey tasting? Yeah, yeah. That's fucking valiant. It was in the <laughs> castle though. Man, I'm usually eating cornflakes and wanking, not at the same time, but like I just sort of can't then go whiskey tasting. Yeah, yeah. clay pigeon shooting was sick, by the way. Yeah. Me and Carl were fucking great. I got to the final, me and Phil Chapman. Yeah, I fancy myself as a bit of a, or to be fair, I hit four out of ten. But I I, I, re- I found it very satisfying. Yeah. Hasn't someone got in touch asking if we want to do a Patreon special at a shooting, shooting place in North in, Wales? In yeah. Might see you soon. Yep. We do that. I got into the final with Phil and Phil beat me by one. Yeah, but he's disabled Excellent. now, so you win that one, don't you? <laughs> I kneecap him. You kneecap him. <laughs> Not with a gun, with gravity. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. I think last night coming home was a good call because we'd be much tighter than we already are. That is epic. I fucking... I know, everyone I know everyone that was there at FUBAR, I hope you're watching this oh. and your mind is blown. That, a, that happened. Because if you're from Stirling or uni in Stirling... You don't expect you must be like, any of us to walk in. Yeah. It was, it was mad that you could see them like, what the fuck are you doing here? Why are you here? I love that shit. Yeah. And there was so many of us all. Everyone was in a good... In the good place, everyone was dancing. The music was. Great. Everyone on their own terms was high as fuck. Yeah. Either on joy or a bag of joy. Yeah. Like, I sat with Paul Blair, like just talking for about two and a half hours about how proud of each other we were. It's great. Hammered drunk, 
like shots just kept getting brought over. You know those like test tube shots that are like a quid ago. There's a cute girl wandering around telling him. We every time she came up to us, as, as many people as were near us, we went another eight. Yeah, just again, and it was like being. 18, 19 again. Yeah, I felt like we I felt like got more money. money. Yeah, but we properly bought in to we're in a, a shit all night club. Like in Liverpool, it'd be one of the worst nightclubs in the city. But because it's the best, it's the only thing in Sterling. It yeah. was, it was fucking brilliant. Yeah, because because oh, we'd all gone like right, this is it. Let's all get on board, and we did. Yeah. I sat the shot girl down. Well, that's what you got to do with these tag dudes. With every everything like this, you have to just go. We're doing Highland Games. Like I know Freddie's gone, oh, I don't want to do it. But it's way better if you just go, cool, we're doing this, let's get yeah, into that's it. that's what we did. Foobar. Well, I've just got to turn up. I shot the sh I shot, shot, shot. Fucking hell, shot the shocker. Touch in the most, 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 most. I sat the girl down. Speaks bouncer now. Touch, 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 touch. Oh, oh, yeah, 17. She was 19, the, the shot girl. I was like, hi, You I, sat her down and went, how young are you? No, she, I went, because I, I was fucked. I went, um, have you got any dreams? And she went, yeah. I went, what are, you, what are your dreams? Oh, you bad quag. And she went, I want to live in Spain. She went, um, I want to study in Spain and stuff. I want to do it next year. And I was like, what's your name? I asked, I can't remember what her name was. So I'm going to come back to Stella next year. And if you're working here and not in Spain, you're fucking dead. She was like, okay. You're dead? Yeah. Murder? We were talking about <laughs> Follow your dreams or murder? Carl, you saying that sober sounded weird and threatening. I can only imagine after no. little test tube shots and a bit of his tequila, how weird that's like. I drank a What's your dream? <laughs> What's your dream? If you don't do that dream, I'm coming back here. I'm gonna murder you. What's, what films are in when he gets the kid, the, the shop owner, and he says, somebody will wake up tomorrow and it'll be the best day of his life. No. Good Will Hunting. Good Will Hunting. No. No. What? Fuck Jumanji. It. It's gonna do my head in that. Jumanji? Something like Pulp Fiction. No, the original Jumanji. Two. Oh, it's Fight Club. It's Fight Club. Yes, it is. It's Fight Club. It's Jumanji. It was like that. I was like, "Fuck him, chase your dreams. Don't be living in this this Jumanji. town forever." And she's like, "I will, I will." And then I went and bought like five hundred shots of tequila, and went to the dance floor with Callum Oakley and just disappeared for an hour. So good. Very jealous, guys. Very jealous. Yeah, it was great. It was I'm such not a jealous of how all because I'm mate. I'm doing quite well. I've had one blip with the drugs where someone went, do you want these? And I went, ah, yeah, yeah. and then I've done all right. I've done I've had a couple of blips. I've, I'm doing all right. Not going back to that dark place I got to in October, September, doing them on my own and lying. But I wouldn't be able to be there without being one of the bell ends that would, I'd look like Casper the ghost by Thursday morning. <laughs> I'd have been totally see-through. I'd have kept going. So part of me is gutted that I missed it, but I have not got the self-control to see those bell ends go... Yeah. I, I'd just be into it. So even, I'm sort of glad. Even like all the sounds gaps. fucking all the, brilliant. In the, in the gaps between all the activities, we went to Curry, we had a little kick around in the front, we were watching the footy in the castle, shooting the shit. And everyone was on good form. Everybody. Everyone. Oh, so good. Yeah, so good. Because like, there's some very different characters there. For saying we all work in the same industry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it just, it was the perfect mixed bag. Everyone had a great time on their own terms. Everyone had exactly the stag do they wanted to have. Yeah. Superb. Very happy. There's Someone get married. I'm, I'm, come on. Come on, Carl. It's time now. I'll be Vegas. She's... Really? Yeah. The come marriage on. or the stag? Probably both. All right. And like one go. Cool. I know you want to do low-key wedding and not pay for everyone. Can you do what market stag do? But that's what the point is. Yeah. We have a great honeymoon in the stag do and then the wedding's just for us. Because you are the most. This is. I'm not fucking loud. Yeah, I'm that the one. closest. But Vegas will be the stag. Has to be. For a, for a fight. <laughs> Sterling as well. or Vegas? It's either Foo Bar or the Strip. <laughs> Honestly, that night it may as well have been Vegas. But the anonymity of being in a castle, and not like obviously we went out on the the Wednesday, but the the castle just allowed everyone to do whatever they wanted to do with no worries about being photographed, filmed. Middle of nowhere, not even. Uh, so I did mine at an old house in near Chesterfield, and everyone was like, "What are we do?" Like, I got a few messages, you know, like, "Where is this again?" You're like, in the middle of the country, we've got people coming from Newcastle, Leeds, Manchester. Some people coming from the East Midlands, some coming from London. Chesterfield was in a great spot, but crucially, we're on the side of a hill, and the guy who owns it lives like round the back in a, a house. 
You just you could shout your fucking head off till five in the morning. You're the only dickheads that can hear it. No one's pestering you. We were none of us were famous, but it was, I love that. And they had a, a little swimming pool. I think the uh, rent in a house stag do is genius. It was great. It was you never. Idea. No one ever goes. They're too pissed. They can't come in. You know when people do Newcastle or try and do Dublin or whatever. Everyone breaks it's off. It's great, yeah, but it's a it's a lot of logistics. Just get all the dickheads you like in a house or a castle. Yeah, I think if I ever get married, the stag do I would do something similar to this. Yeah, definitely. It's great. Maybe the a really clever way is to try and do a place that's great for a night out, and then a castle nearby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A castle near Dublin. Oh, holy shit! That'd be unbelievable. Apparently, Dublin's a bit of a nightmare for stag dudes. They they stamped down on it a few years ago. Really? Because they became so popular with stag dudes that it was like, is it Temple Bar? Mm -hmm. uh, they just sort of it was almost like a zero tolerance. Like you're not if you're a bunch of English lads, you're not coming and making our fucking boozer because they were busy anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. Fucking Castle amazing. near Glasgow. Oh, jeez, jeez. Scotland's yeah. lovely. I love Scotland so much. I've been there loads lately. It's just so nice. It's very good. Oh, see. <sighs> Can we have a break? I'm, I want to think about what I've missed out on. Yeah. How big was the bag? I'm not messing. Comical. If it, if it was filled about halfway up and it was about as big as this Dettel thing. And it, that's oh. not an exaggeration. Mama like that. Mama like that. And at one point it went missing and we thought one of the, ch <laughs> what? One of the children. Thought one of the children had stolen it. But it turns out someone had just hidden it under the stairs that the children couldn't steal it. Who? Can we name who hid it? No. Oh. Just say Phil Chapman. Um, get well, Phil. Shout out, Sterling. Shout out, Fubar. <laughs> Today's podcast is sponsored by the subscription coffee service, Packed Coffee. I like the coffee. It's very good. Award-winning speciality <laughs> coffee. This is going to be a fun advert. 100% speciality grade, freshly roasted to perfection for your order. There are over 15 different coffees on the menu at any given time to choose from, including Great Taste 2020 and 2021 winners. It's genuinely dead good, and the coffee is so good. They put the name of the farmer that they got it from. That's how good they are with their... Like sauces, they they're like, listen, this is Jeff's coffee, John's coffee, Giuliano's coffee. You get to know who's making it, and genuinely, I'm becoming a bit of a coffee snob because I used to be a Starbucks guy, and I still am when I need to be. But these uh, these little fruity ones, these little rare ones, more packed coffee. It's more ethical as well. You can pause, cancel, or change your plan at any time. It doesn't have to be delivered at the start of the month or every Wednesday. You get it when you want, delivered through the letterbox. Make a pack coffee. Sorry, make a pack to make coffee. Make a cat pack to make better coffee. So if you haven't tried pack yet, all new customers get a free V60 and filter kit when they first sign up to a packed plan. Go to packedcoffee.com. That's P-A-C-T coffee.com. Create your flexible coffee subscription. Use the code WORD. The code is WORD, W-O-R-D. Use that at checkout. You get your free brewing kit with your order. The code is valid for new customers. When you create a packed coffee plan, you get speciality coffee through your letterbox. Don't wait. Go to packcoffee.com and create your coffee subscription. And you'll feel like me, like a Jordan Cell Bunny who's had a line of cocaine. He's hyped just reading. That's how good it is. Woo! Draymond's here. There's snow falling from the sky. You need to warm up. Why don't you warm up between my tits and put your cock in my pussy? Oh, you could lose your fingers. Why don't you hide them in my very warm pussy? Yes. <laughs> you don't want to lose a foot to frostbite, but you might you lose your cock to my pussy. Imagine if like... <laughs> <laughs> but not because of the sub-zero temperatures. I'll melt your dick with my warm pussy. And if your friend likes, he can store his dick in my other hole. That is the one of my ass where I pull from. <laughs> oh. Oh. Thank, thank you for making this clearer. I wasn't. I didn't get what you're insinuating. <laughs> Holiday, pussy. In. But that is the limit of my holes because my mouth is for my marriage. <laughs> from before. I'm lost, Haxan. Imagine if somebody from the Holiday Inn, like the uppers, the higher ups, <laughs> yeah, go, yeah, yeah. we need to fucking investigate this, and she gets pulled in. Needs a promotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to what? Oh yeah, um, the Svetlana. We're a little worried. <laughs> Promotion. You own it now, girl. See you later. A little worried about some of your behaviour. It's been uh, talked about on a podcast. <laughs> well, if I don't, I just suck your fucking pussy. To be fair, the first three letters of both words are hole in, aren't they? 
Oh, Carl, that's what you get paid for. <laughs> that level of bounce. Gave it away. What happened with this cunt with the tie around the neck at the at the game? He was... The anti-oil protester. He's done a very good job, hasn't he? Ran on the pitch. He, and he, he zip-tied himself to the you post. season ticket holder as well. Yeah, he was, he's actually... Uh, he won't look over the bill money. The art had money even. But where's the art had money bill? Stop the oil. What's just happened there? What words were you saying there? <laughs> Literally, what, what, I, what? Where's the Arteta money? Yeah, it's, it's a meme from when Everton was skinned. All right, cool. Just me and about eighty thousand people went, eh? No, it's a very oh no, loads money. of them. Yeah, Jilly Bean would have been like, come on, Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in Texas, and even I know about the Bill Kenwright Arteta money thing. No, well, Bill Kenwright was embroiled in a scandal, wasn't he? Was he? Because they reckon he lost the Arteta money. When oh. Everton sold Arteta to Arsenal. That's how sm- fucking mental Everton is. Like, oh shit, where's only five that Arteta mil. money? Wow. It was only five mil. I Bill! Think. Bill! <laughs> <laughs> I've moved that package. Oh, you've lost the Arteta money. Come on, Gene. That, that is... Stop cleaning up the fucking transfer fees. <laughs> it's not far away. <laughs> so where's the Arteta money? No, but there was Arteta genuinely, a, a, like the police got involved in everything. And he got cleared of all charges. But for a while, Bill Kenwright was like under investigation for losing the Arteta money. It wasn't registered on Everton's account. Oh, well. And then he sold it to, you know, Usmanov or whatever. Uh, he's gone now. He had to extradite him. Yeah, we had a naughty one. He was only he was only um, Finch Farm. Not Finch Farm, the new one. No, he is Finch Farm, yeah. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people <laughs> going, lads, have you had a fucking meltdown? What What are these words? Right, anyway. A man came so on a, the pitch. A lad he, came on the pitch. Yeah, he was, he was protesting... Um, the the current the, and the, the foregoing laws of like oil and gas and shit and the government's selling us out blah 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 right like, so he's yeah. basically a, like a climate protester essentially yeah. but if you watch right. the video he made he talks sense and he's clearly quite an articulate kid and he, what he's what he's done's worked so fair so he ran so what happened he ran on and he zip tied himself round the neck to the post and he just stood there and should then have just carried on they should just played on when him stood there that would have been the best thing to do yeah I I agree and then when they got him off. No, it's a bad precedent to set, isn't it? When you run out of posts <laughs> and some fathers for justice going, oh, dude, fuck you, fuck you, Carol, Someone's, I want my kids back. Someone sat in the centre say, I'll just play it on them. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. I mean, it'd be really funny, though, if that would be one way to get your kids back if you scored the winning goal at Goodison. <laughs> Maybe you just cable telling you, fuck off. Imagine that was going wide and he entered in. Goal. <laughs> well, that beach ball goal comes against Liverpool for Sunderland all those years ago. It's the same thing. Yeah. Men are just beach balls, but more animate. <laughs> okay now put that in the book some <laughs> random football references at the start of this one I they started off with the pussy and then they went random late not his football references it's basically going to be the next inch of Britain because he said this spring we mobilise Oh, this spring we mobilise yeah. because the winter's too cold we hate oil but we might might lose our vinkies protesting so in the spring honestly those clocks go forward and watch them. <laughs> They'll all be out. You won't be able to have the fucking kick around with that insulate Britain going, shut it down! <laughs> they go forward. It'd be great if they started doing all the major sporting events, though. Yes, they do, Carl. Just checking. Yeah, they do, yeah. All of them. Go on. Yeah. Crown, what about the bowls? Like, no, that's not major, is it? I'm talking it like isn't the bowls. Like, if they get involved in Wimbledon. <laughs> or if they get hired as a ball boy, and they just start throwing balls into them. <laughs> Look at what it says on the ball. <laughs> All the, cycle. No, all of the balls have got letters on. They have to put it together. Hang on. Insulate Britain are going to stand out like a. F- like the, 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 even in the application process, we're like, welcome to the ball boy application process. There'll be a load of fucking little Tory children, all 17, 18 year olds, and then one scruffy cunt who's got like dreads. And sorry, what's your name? My name's like uh, Blaze or something. Fuck it. Earthwind. Earthwind. And Earthwind, do you love tennis? Yeah, I really do, man. Yeah. It's not getting, you know. I think they'll be all right. He probably try do you think hard. They how many them on how BBC many? Sport? What? Do you think they interview the ball boys on BBC Sport? How do you think they get ball boys for Wimbledon? They're members of the club, aren't they? Right. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, they're, they're tennis, like they're future tennis stars. Right. Cool. Yeah. Well, Earthwinders as well. Yeah. Got a great backhand. But there's, there's, you can care about the climate and still be an elite sportsman. It's true. <laughs> Sebastian Vettel. What facts? But yeah. bore off though. Yeah. What's the best event he could interrupt and what could he do? It'd be great if like it was the final of the Rugby World Cup and someone's running free for the train and just fucking spears him and takes him out. Big. F- Earthwind's got to do some fucking <laughs> training on that one. 
an absolute powerhouse flying down. He's like, this is for the climate. And gets his fucking spleen fucking knocked through. Fuck off. Johnny Wilkinson dead. Johnny Wilkinson! <laughs> Adam had to pull out a fucking rugby player's name. Retired in 2009. <laughs> Famous winger, Johnny Wilkinson. They, the, a climate protester would come and a rugby player would like, this would be so funny. He'd just get to break someone's Kill fucking him. jaw on the way to still scoring a try. He'd be sick in the boxing. If you like doing a thing, we we couch Earthwind. down someone. Earthwind. I mean, masquerade is the ref. Where you're not gonna die. <laughs> oh my god, you could be the ref. Like you could tie the ref up. Like they could kidnap the ref, tie him in the fucking locker, lash him in there, lock it, put twenty p in, lock the locker, and then he dresses the ref. And then halfway through the boxing, he just starts punching the fights' heads in. Like and in the rest of the way, slow count. Takes his fucking like, oh, shirt yeah. off. He's like, "Fuck off, mate! Don't drill for fucking oil." So yeah. Earthwind, the hippie <laughs> climate protester, yeah. is going to start punching professional boxers mid-fight. Yeah, they won't expect it, will they? Oh, literally. They don't expect the ref to start They don't expect the ref to start smoking everyone. Mate, Earthwind, if you're watching, <laughs> just take a shit on a snooker table in the <laughs> middle of the championship. <laughs> don't do any sport. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, the, all these suggestions are going to get you fucking murked. Right, run, right. Oh, Super Bowl. That's it. Super Bowl. <laughs> They're running for a fucking touchdown and you go trip them up. Oh, now that's right. You get murdered by a massive dude. Get that brown out of pocket. Big <laughs> shit. Hey, no, Sheffield. Just grab the black and pot it and go, hey, run off. You like, that guy? You like snooker, kid. Fuck it. You could do with a shower. Never mind that. Why you just go over and just waz all the balls everywhere on the table. <laughs> Fuck off. Fuck off. No, once you've shat on the snooker table, that is a problem, isn't it? You sp spaz the balls up and they're like, do you want to just get rid of this fucking hippie? Yeah, but you do one Sport and dirty... integrity means their balls are going to be put back exactly where they were before. Yeah. So they'll yeah, be take... left there for about an hour and a half. Oh, that'll wow. take 15 minutes. They'll just get the cameras out. A vegan shit in the middle <laughs> of the World Championship final snooker table is a major issue. They can't boxers, just, you can't just lift it up and like, oh, just lift it up and get a new table. It's illegal for boxers to punch non-boxers though, isn't it? Their, their hands are classed as deadly weapons. It's the same as shooting someone legally. Cool. Um, thanks. <laughs> We're back to Adam, Adam Rowe QC. Absolute fact, this is law. That's, it's, not even, it's not even state law. It's international law. International law. Interpol will arrest you. If you're a boxer in a professional boxing fight and a, the referee, who looks smelly, all of a sudden rips his shirt off and goes, stop drilling for oil, lad, and punches you in the face, you've got to be like, I can't do anything because these elite, they're registered weapons. Has anyone, anyone got any fists that aren't registered weapons? Because, mate, I mean, I want to kick him, but it might be a grey area legally. <laughs> What's what are the easiest sports to shut down? Snooker. Shit on the snooker table. Yeah, there's there's one. Curling, just what? kick the jack. Is it jack and curling? Curling. Bowls. You mean what in Scotland? Joe, Joe, when you get a slip, what's the one? What's the just one where they the end and do that right to the end? Yeah, what's curling? That's curling. Just unscrew the brushes. <laughs> Here's come and, they, and lets it go, and then <laughs> what the fuck? Someone's fucking manipulated the brushes. No, give them like a flash. <laughs> Someone's manipulated the brushes. Oh, oh that's what they'd say. This is like the great unscrewing of 62. <laughs> oh, thank fuck no one watches or gives a shit about the sport. <laughs> oh, the millions of people at home. Cricket would be easy, wouldn't it? Just Shoot. whisper in his ear like before he goes. <laughs> what? what? On, hey. Climbers is just like, fuck, do you know we're all going to die? Come on, throw that ball. Have a good one. So you think a crit... So <laughs> His head's battered then. <laughs> so the bowler, the bowler... And where is he to whisper? <laughs> <laughs> a no, megaphone? He's, he's taking no, a big feeling. rope. He's no. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> sometimes, the sometimes bowlers are at the, uh, like, at the boundary. Mm -hmm. So you just have to sort of lean over and go, hey, <laughs> oh, it's going to... The environment, everyone's going to die. Children's children are going to suffer... So essentially, you're trying to depress the cricketer yeah. to the point when he goes right up to bowl. Is Stuart Broad, and he's like, "What's the point?" <laughs> yeah, winning is futile if there's no will to celebrate. <laughs> Just drop Can't even play Or now. he could run and just volley the wicket. Uh, guys, why have we cancelled the cricket match? Uh, because one of the 22 players feels sad. 
So that's the end of the ashes. All go home. You can go back to Australia. <laughs> what the fuck's gone on, Stu? Bowl the fucking ball. <laughs> oh, I feel melancholy. Bowling is futile. What's the calmest sport? Calmest? Like Calm. snooker. Like, like something that's nice Snooker and... is very chilled out, isn't it? Yeah, you've got to shut up. Yeah. You've got to shut up. I mean, darts, the actual sport of darts is really calm and controlled, isn't it? Dressage, just stab at us. <laughs> Crofts, ruin Crofts. Volley all the dogs. Don't do that. I love take that. a whistle. Oh my God, imagine that. Just take treats. Just stand in the crowd with treats. Is it called Crofts? Crofts, yeah. Like, what do you think it was? What do you think it was? Woofs. <laughs> cool. I thought it was Crofts. <laughs> It's a tea, dude. Oh, dude, I wanted to take the piss, but you were absolutely right. I I knew it was crufts because it's like crusts, but with an F. Yeah. I always think of bread. It's Stuff, like Mike Tyson. Stuffed crufts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely dog. Can I get any cheese in it, though? <laughs> <laughs> crufts is now sponsored by Pizza Hut. <laughs> Stuffed crufts. Is crufts a sport? Oh, it's a big event, though, isn't it? It's a big event. It's a World oh, Cup of you, dogs, how'd you, how'd you fuck up? Crof? I've got one. How'd you cut? Oh, just put Viagra in some of the fucking pedigree chum. Uh, just before the big final day of Crufts and all the dogs are just fucking raping each other. That was a bit harsh. <laughs> that was a bit harsh. But it was dog rape and that is funny. What, what what's the Royal Flower Show one with the old That's McMig Garden? Show. The Chelsea Flower Show? Imagine ruining that. Just get a lawnmower. Yeah, they like plants, don't they? Get a These lawnmower? Cunts. They love yeah, a plant. I think it's counterintuitive. Although they probably don't like the way those flowers are grown. It's probably... I'm just... I'm. Projecting yeah, pesticides, earth wind, or whatever he's called. Formula yeah. One, just take a scooter. I thought horny dogs got get didn't get the uh, didn't get the. I thought that would have. I said be, really. The, the, I think your head was already at the Chelsea Flower Show. It was. You were like, yeah, never mind about dog rape. There's no hot comedy there. Lawnmower, Flower Show. <laughs> Take a unicycle at the Formula One. Just get in the way. That's been done. Get you, in the way. You, I mean, unicycle's taking it to next level, but people have run on the track. Have they? Yeah. Yeah. At, um, Emily Pankhurst. There was a guy dressed as like a Emily Pankhurst. Yeah, she did the Formula One. <laughs> yeah. She well, it was the Formula One of the day, wasn't it? Oh, hell, have you heard the conspiracy? She had a return ticket in her pocket, you know, train ticket. What? what did she want to do? Be like, fuck a nice horse, lad. Who the fuck is Emily Pankhurst? Emily, the uh, women's rights suffragette. She jumped in front of the king's horse. Yes. Killed herself at a race for suffragettes. Well, this was a, it, been a it happened a few times, yeah, because horse racing was so big. She just stepped out in front of the horses. But she had a return ticket in her pocket. Right. Just saying. I think she was Mancunian. Yeah. yeah, she was going back to Salford Keys. Fucking hell, that's a fucking nice horse. She definitely mean it. That's the conspiracy. Well, was she thrown? She was a suffragette, and they were pretty militant, weren't they? Oh, they were just given the vote, innit? They did in the end. <laughs> You're right, they did. Women are allowed to vote. And, do you have and that is, guys, good thing, innit? <laughs> I'm pro that. <laughs> pro that. Me too. I can only agree. On your side. Ruin the Grand National would be good, though. What would you do if you had a cause you properly believed in? What would be your big stunt? Doesn't have to ruin a sporting event unless you wanted to, but what would you do? I'm trying to write a bit about this at the moment. The only thing I properly give a shit about is the regulation of the internet. And I, there's been so many things that I've disagreed with Brexit. I thought that was an absolute crock of shite. Um, I was adamant that we should remain, and here we are. Harvey's law, you mean? I was, I'm obviously stand with the people of Ukraine. What do you mean? The reg Harvey's law, isn't it? The regulation of the internet. I just don't want anyone to tell us... Oh, we can't sorry. say dog rape on YouTube. And I, I'm really, I'm worried that that because this is starting to make so much money now, that big TV companies and governments will start going, ah, we need to get our greasy fucking mitts on this. I'm very worried that how you're going to protest that. You're going to shag Also dog. porn, like in a very separate point to the thing Carl is, is saying. <laughs> porn, I don't want a Tory government telling me what I can pull my little white pud to. Because I don't need the hypocrisy of some Tory sex pest being like, blah, 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 it's immoral. Another thing I don't so, get with... Then I'd march. I'd be down on Parliament Square with a dog, dick out. What I don't get with the porn <laughs> regulation is they can't stop you doing whatever you want. Do you know what I mean? The porn regulation, yeah, you might not be able to watch a £300 Jamaican woman face sitting on a midget anymore. 
but you can Did pay you? both of them to get involved with that. Right, cool. Well, that's a bit more expensive. Than <laughs> also, I like I like to masturbate just before <laughs> bed. You know? Imagine that, Lord, goes to bed. <laughs> Who's coming up the stairs there? Ignore that. I can hear... Too I can hear, loud, very different uh, noises. Yeah, yeah. I can hear heavy footsteps <laughs> and light footsteps. <laughs> Here's Joy and little Freddy. Um, Hello. Yeah, I... I just, I feel like that's so, I love how the internet works now. And I don't want anyone to tell me I can't watch I think, like, the dirty they, porn. But they can tell you not to watch it, but you can find it. You're forgetting about real life and the dark web. Right. Can I just discount <laughs> real life? I'm not, <laughs> I don't want to see in real life, Big Joy, the 300 pound Jamaican woman, sit on a midget's face. I just, I don't even want to, how do I even like, no, sit, properly sit down. How does that even work? And then you come and you're like, guys, I'm going to have to get you a taxi. Imagine the Have you got an Uber? Do you get Uber in Sargal? Will you share a taxi? I'm going to share him with his dirty, you need to wash his face, the dirty little midget. Imagine the post not clarity after that. Imagine. Puff of the Uber. Oh. Ima wash his face. Come here. <laughs> Who, who's she sending the invoice to? <laughs> Send the invoice to have have a word pod at gmail.com. No, that's not your personal Gmail. <coughs> <laughs> Me not do bank transfer. Well, what sort of porn is banned that you're into? Not, nothing's been yet. banned yet. But right. it's going there. But no, I'm not saying it's going there, but they've already there's been some noises about this. Like I, the, what's, what shit before we do the porn what shit about all TV TV comedy can't say that can't say this oh god can't say that you can't say this can't say that it's fucking heavily regulated not just by the the, the license fee paying bullshit but advertisers and then also people going hi listen to something and I found it offensive and I'm a fucking child yeah, that's what makes us so good yeah but that's what I don't want the government did you hear what happened after the Jimmy Carr thing the Tories jumped on it because they were having a fucking nightmare with all the Christmas party stuff. So they wanted to deflect attention. And they were like, oh, we might have to look at some of these streaming services and the content that's being put on there because this needs this needs regulating. Fuck off, you horrible cunts. We just make our own streaming service. You're literally starving on impoverished children and you're trying to tell us what, what we're allowed to laugh at. Oh, there's so many reasons I hate these fucking Tories. But that it, that if they started messing with that, and then on a whole separate thing, let me just wank to what I want, innit? Yeah. If you're having a little dirty... Yeah, but if they ban it from this, you're forgetting you've got the ultimate streaming service, the mind. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Stream whatever you want, whenever you want up there. I'm going to watch Friends, Series 7, Episode 3 right yeah. now. You know full well you have ADHD. <laughs> you can't make it through an imagination wank without wandering off. I've got to be honest, when I have an imagination wank, it does get a little bit... <laughs> like, the storyline doesn't get completely tied up towards the end. A lot of plot holes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're watching Joy sit on the midget's face and all of a sudden Steven Gerrard's fucking banging one in for the 35 yards no 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 no, 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 no. Who comes in? All the women. All the women? Well, at yeah. least it's on, like, you know... Yeah, it's on the same thing. My ADHD is, you know, it's regulated, ironically. Is it? Yeah. When you've got an erection, you can focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Very cool. single track mind. That. What are these other women doing? Cock. What? What are these other women doing? Depends what. They I form mean. a queue. Isn't this, isn't this just part of the fantasy? Ah, Adam. Not <laughs> 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 <Run> before. <laughs> just loads of women. <laughs> loads of strippers just going, you're doing great. <laughs> good wanking. Yeah. I, I, I think Harvey's law is a good one. I know this is a bit. Do you know what it is? Uh, having to upload your ID when you sign up for social media so you can't hide. I agree with this. Oh. I'm sick of being called a fat on funny scouse cunt by a fucking Tonka truck. <laughs> <laughs> a run? Tonka truck? Just because that's what's in the, the oh, profile. Golo Kante or a fucking car or a cartoon. No, that's Ungolo Kante. He really hates you. <laughs> <laughs> he, seems, he seems dead nice on every other bit of social media. He's like, he drives to work in a fucking Prius, but he hates Adam Rose comedy. So try hard, that. He, Fuck off. He's, a, he's brilliant in front of the back four, but fucking hates, have a word. I hate that. Oh, he drives a Mini. When I asked, he gets loads of money still. He's but just using it to oh, that that More random football, but Ungola Kante, what's he earning? 140 grand a week? At least. Because, I mean, he's if He's one you, of the best in the world, if not the best. Yeah, but job. has he got yeah, an agent? Humble. 
Has he got an agent or does he turn up going, oh my goodness, I've got a pencil, thank you. I'll take this. That does my head in. He's still got the money, hasn't he? Has he? So he's just not spending You've no it. idea what he earns. You're just making it up. He earns millions of pounds. He's on two grand a week because he's too nice. I to reckon he's anymore. on 150. Oh, can't he? Oh, I drive him. Nearly 300k. Yeah. Oh, shit. Ooh. It says he hates oh, Adam Rose comedy. Oh, fuck. That's Lukaku. Ah, no, no, no. no and I'm dwarfing his. Oh, he's quite small as well. 290k a week. <laughs> that is Lukaku. Yeah, yeah. The, the news relation. story was that Lukaku's wage dwarfs and Golo Kante's dwarfs. So it said. So he's earning a mil, uh, probably around a mil with sponsorships a month. Oh, drive a mini. Fuck off then. Give the money back. Don't be adding. Sorry. But Harvey's Someone's long. doing all right. <laughs> Fucking spend it. Get a poor person, ride him to work. <laughs> Fucking joke. That's what I do. <laughs> Finn, I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> On all fours. Oh, what the, Who doesn't want to ride a Welshman all the way to the lavatories? <laughs> Carl. Fuck on Golo, can't he? Right, yes, back to my question. Harvey's What's your what? stunt going to be for your cause? What are you doing? How are you getting your message out? Sticking my d uh, dick in a dog on Parliament Square. Yeah. If that doesn't get us some attention. You're probably going to jail, aren't you? You can't shag dogs and avoid a prison sentence. Fuck. Fuck that. <laughs> that. That is a bit of your legal <laughs> advice that I think might stand there, Adam. I, will, I will give the you gavel. That. QC Adam, eh? yeah, yeah. QC Adam pulls one out of actual fact. No, you can't fuck a dog and get away with it. I mean, there'll be fucking witnesses, Palham Square, even the traffic. With like loads of traffic, and then Ungolo Kanti going, I fucking hate those guys. Um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty adamant that I will. I'll Palham Square. Hang on, why are you shagging a dog? What? What, what's that go back to? No, you've got to make a gesture. Parliament Square is where they all go, innit? In front of uh, yeah, but then they're the expecting Palace that. of Westminster. They're expecting that. They're, they're expecting that. Do it in your back so garden. So go to Lincoln Town Centre. Oh, no, do it in your back and garden. And rape a dog on Market Square. I would parachute into the Champions League final, holding a sign. Right. It's not been done. <laughs> Adam, I didn't get a ticket! <laughs> That's been done. If now. Liverpool are playing... Has it? Yeah, not so long If ago Liverpool either. are playing... Yeah. You're. I've Liverpool player. I'll be watching the match. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. The yeah, cause yeah, can yeah. wait. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean, I fucking love the cause, but do it to your Europa League final instead. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Villarreal, Seville. Villarreal are in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Oh, they're having a good few seasons. And <laughs> Sevilla went out last night to West Ham. Okay, yeah, so that won't work actually. Oh. Neither of them are able to be in the Europa League final. Oh God, thanks for correcting me. Thank so you. you're shagging a dog in Parliament Square to protest porn laws. I can wank to whatever I want, including this memory. No, I get joy to sit on my face, middle of Parliament Square. That's better. With the midget, with loads of mid with No, little people. Little protesters. How many? 12. Dan, 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 Dan. <clears throat> yeah. That'll work. I think I'd regret it once I came. Eurovision. I enter Eurovision. You enter. Enter Eurovision. Right. Represent Great Britain at Eurovision. Piece of piss. And then inst instead of singing, I just use the platform to make me statement. Right. <laughs> you probably end up with more points <laughs> than if you do done... <laughs> That's the kind of banter you expect here. Imagine if you won that. Imagine if the whole of Europe got behind your message. What's your message? Have you got a message or have you just, you've decided how you're protesting? What's, what are you actually protesting? N'Golo Kante Tonga trucks. Um, I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. I'll get there. Yeah. Well, what, once, when I've got once, a cause, what pisses somebody... you off the most? What what tickles your fires? There's not much. Um, Surely online presences and some co some sort because you're online very a lot. He's, he's got that. He's got his mind. He doesn't need the internet. He's got it all on there. Oh. Sometimes Adam just sits there going, "Yeah, like, oh god, he's going on unlisted he garnishes on in restaurants." <laughs> captain, my captain. <laughs> I tell you what, it that that. Honestly, uh -huh. is something I could get behind. Hang on, so he floats into the Champions no, League no, no, final no, no. with no Coriander <laughs> on a side. No, 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 no. Eurovision. What you, get, what's the I, song? Well, I'm not singing. No, so you don't Coriander. like the, what, the, like the random oils on like a salad or something? Yeah, and like if you get list like, them. Yeah, if you get an, like if I get a chicken madras and it says contains onions, garlic, tomatoes, and chicken, and then I get it, and there's fucking a load of coriander sprinkled on it, because they're like, oh, it looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, but it tastes like fucking soap. 
Fuck are you, off. Are you one of them people who taste soap, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, ah, yeah, Seneca is as well. Yeah, it's ridiculous. If you've got the bollocks to garnish your food, write it on the fucking menu so I can tell the waitress to fuck off with it. Yeah. Do you taste soap? None of them leaves. None of them leaves on my meat, girl. Do you taste the coriander or do you taste soap? I don't mind coriander, so... Do you, you taste the coriander, then? Yeah, I don't mind it. Was it like one in six people or something? I just want to... I, don't, I, I, I thought you meant science. What do I mean? Dressing. Dressing. Same thing, really. Oh, no, because that's on the side. You can just push No, that. no, no. But he's I, talking I like about already sprinkled on. But oh. I like a salad. I like a salad. Stop fucking abusing it with oils that I've not, like... Right. You're, I had an argument with a waitress once. Because I ordered on the menu. I read the menu very carefully. And I ordered the chicken burger. It's a chicken burger with cheese and bacon and barbecue sauce. And I was like, I'll have that. I come. It had all of that on. Plus, lettuce, onion. And I mean, like, uncooked onion. Ugh. Tomato and coleslaw on top of everything else it was listed. So I was like, excuse me, love. Uh, I need this change if you don't mind. I, I didn't want any tomato, onion, lettuce, or coleslaw. And she was like, well, you didn't ask for that. And I was like, well, it's not listed on the menu. But those things are on it. What if you're allergic to coleslaw? She and she's like, oh, it's just taken as a, a, a standard that the burgers come with Shove salad. your standard and I was like, up your fucking no, ass. Most menus say all burgers come with fries and tomato, lettuce and whatever. It didn't say that. It literally just, I was like, look, I've got the menu. She's like, I'm sorry, we can't just swap food. Just I'll tell you what. When I, was like, I was like, I'm, I'm not going to pay for it. When you're flying in Paris, parachute, flapping in the wind. Paris, shoot. Yeah. Th the then same. you'll fucking show her. Yeah. She'll be like, oh my God. He was right. Dressed as an onion. He signs just going to say, shove your coriander up your ass. It's a good song, no? Should we do some questions? <laughs> <laughs> what happened with that Arteta money? <laughs> <laughs> I think people want to know. Wrap it up. Play for a West Ham musical. Oh, should we do some quick questions? Speed round. Yes. Speed round. Hey! Let's make some noise. Ladies and gents, welcome to the speed round. Okay. Um, oh, gee. Right. Lauren Ridley says, hi, question for Carl. Hello. As tour manager, yes. stroke personal assistant, does it ever get monotonous listening to Adam's yeah. show every day of the tour? Four. Saw him, in, saw him in South Shields. It was fucking mint. So I spoke to, I spoke to a, a, a fan about this in... Edinburgh, because yeah. he was watching me watch the show and not laugh. I, I laugh at probably three points because I always find them funny. Um, why weren't you laughing? I said, I've seen the show a lot of times. I said, and I'm watching it differently to everyone else. So I'm watching the show. I'm like, oh, you missed that tag or you changed that. And I'm offering advice and I'm often, yeah. I'm in the audience You're going, this is what I saw. And then he You're part it. of the industry now. Yeah. But watch the bar staff at comedy clubs. They're not laughing at every performer, are they? No. They will do new bits or. I'm not watching not it. Seen. I'm not watching it to enjoy it. I'm watching it as to a analyzer. As a, yeah, to analyze. Yeah. He's Graham Sooness. Yeah. He's he got is. to be doing better here. This is not good enough. But like, because I've seen He's it. Only, does Graham Sooness work at the Holiday Inn? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awful if Graham Sooness off you a fucking threesome at five a.m. You'd do it. Oh, you'd. Fu That's the story thing he said about. Me and Carl would double team Graham Sooness until he came. I don't know who you are, no context. I'm we aware, did. But that we found out. Shut up. Yeah. Who? Who? Were you bevied? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Blair knows him. He oh. run, apparently, he runs all the no context in the country. Fuck. Yeah. Mad. I know you do. Yeah. I, I know like his mad. name. I won't say his name. I know, yeah. Listen, I know this story thing in five years. I love it. <laughs> I'm into it. I want to do this podcast for five years. By which years. you mean, just for context, I make all my decisions now based on what will make the better memory in five years. Yeah, but when Graham Sooners is unzipping his fly and getting his knob out, I think you've got to think, is it is this story worth it? You know, because yeah. you're not gay and he's a 58-year-old former midfielder. I'm not going to suck his cock, though. I'm just going to bum him and pretend it's a woman. You can't. I can't believe I'm saying this to you, but I need to see it. <laughs> I don't think you'd be able to fuck Graham soon as his bum and think, it's just a lady. It's just a Falkirk lady. It's just like fucking Sterling. Oh, Come You couldn't shag Graham soon as up the ass. Nah. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> One day. No, we won't. He's doing no, Saturday, Saturday next week. What you've... He's found his fucking... This is what he's going to do. to Just because he's so pissed off about coriander, he's going down Parliament Square and he's going to bum Graham soon as... Okay. But yeah, I watch it and so analyse. I don't watch to enjoy. So yeah. you'll always see me watching it because I feel like I need to to help 
because there's some bits he misses, some bits he changes around. Some so bits he writes anything down. Yeah, some bits work in better places, and I can see that obviously from a different point of view that Adam can. It's not. It's not eggy. Uh, I'm not laughing. Great, like, but I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Watch the comics. At, watch other comics at comedy. You there's like you've either seen someone's stuff before or you're analysing. That's why, like I watched Andy Askins at the end of February in Birmingham and I was laughing, like really laughing. I think Andy Askins is so amazing. He's coming to play the new club I've got in Chester in the spring. He's coming. He's one of my favourite headliners, really softly spoken and you just, you have to listen. The quality of the lines are amazing. And I laughed at him like a punter and it makes it made me tweet about it and go, I'm genuinely laughing like a punter. Yeah. It doesn't happen loads, does it? No. I nod. If Adam says something good that I haven't heard, I go, yeah. Yeah. That was good. That's why uh, someone messaged in and asked about uh, Shane Gillis coming over and um, was like, are you going to get him on the couch? I've, I've accidentally deleted the question, so apologies. But that's why I'd be excited to go and watch someone like Shane Gillis because after you recommended his special live in Austin, I've watched that four or five times. That is as good as any stand-up I've seen for ages. Yeah. That's, that's another way of, even if you're a tour manager or a comic, watching guys that are brilliant and you're seeing stuff for the first time is fucking great fun. Yeah. Was that what it, did you, when you were watching Chappelle, did you properly like laugh? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he's a killer, isn't he? It was, just, he just, you can watch. He's got f- a way of surprising you. Yeah. That's what, co- that's when a comic laughs. That's why we laugh less, I should say, is the laugh that you, get from an audience, often comes from a surprise punchline. That's a big part of laughter within comedy, is surprising the audience. If they beat you to the punchline, they don't laugh, they go, oh, we knew where you were going. If you can surprise... That's when you get the... Ah. Yeah. So it's it's very hard for a comic on a similar level to you to surprise you, because you can see where they're going. A lot better than an audience can. Someone like Chappelle is working on a different level to almost everyone else on the planet, and especially me and Carl. And he just had a way for over, for, for what, an hour of just, like, there's a couple where I was like, <laughs> I see where that was going. There's a couple that just, just hit you like a fucking steam train, like surprise punchlines. That's that's the difference. It's surprise. That's why we're not, that's why Carl's not laughing at my show. He's not surprised by it, because first of all, he knows it all. And second of all, he might not have even laughed the first time because he knows how we work and he's in comedy so much. Chappelle's just levels above us. Who are the guys on in the UK that make me feel like that? We've had most... The, most of the guys who've come on and been killers here are the same comics that... You watch Finn Taylor and you're like, what? Like, yeah. Oh, he's so good at fucking. flipping it. He's so good at taking you there and you're over there. Alfie. Yeah. Alfie's yeah. got that thing where you're like, what the fuck? Like, it's... Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Elite. Russ Bolton says, how do you, lids? What's up? Me and the missus have got tickets to see Adam in Brighton. Our local compare stroke promoter is called James Alderson. He hosts a gig at Horndean Technical College. Comedy All-Stars is what it's called. Somehow he tempts live at the Apollo Axe to venture out of London to a school hall. I think in Hampshire. He's around Portsmouth, isn't he? Are there any weird gigs that shouldn't work because of location, etc., but the regular crowd make it easy? Rush, that's from Russ from Chichester. Um, I know James Alderson. I've worked with him a couple of times. He's a really good comic. Good comic. I've worked at him at sort of the weekend gigs that aren't the most fun, and he's solid. But he's growing these gigs around Hampshire, Portsmouth, and whatnot. And everyone I speak to says they're fucking great. Um, but I know exactly. I picked this question out because those gigs where you're like, "What the fuck is this?" and then it it just sort of works. I did a PTA fundraiser. In Surbiton, Surrey, mm. on a Thursday wow, about five, six worse. years ago. It was one of the best gigs ever. I've never, like, you know when you walk in, everything was wrong. It was just like, it, there was BMW SUVs parked at every, it was so, like, clearly Surrey middle class. I was like, oh, this is going to be a fucking nightmare. Got to it, and I knew it was a fundraiser for a school. But it was at a school. It was in their school hall. And all the PTA had done like their own bar. And I was like, oh, fucking awful. And I'd done it because I was down at the headliners in Chiswick. Mm-hmm. And I'd gone down a day early. It was 200 quid. 
and everything about it seemed minging. And the compare went on, and I was like, oh, this just doesn't sound like it's going to go on. I, did, I was meant to do 25 minutes. I did over 30. It was like it was a tour show. They yeah. got everything. It was it was such a surprise. There are those weird gigs that just hot surprise water, you. Hot water before they got their own venue, when it was in the Holiday Inn, was so much better than any hotel function room gig I've ever done. It was a weekend club, and they ran it in one of three function rooms at the Holiday Inn, depending on how many tickets they'd sold. There was one room that was a cupboard. It was smaller than the room we're in now. It held 30 people. There's one that held about 100, and there's one that held about 200. Consistently was just a really good gig. Always fun, up for the crowds. It the looked ho- a bit shit, didn't it? It looked awful. It was weird. It was, why was it a always so green? Br- a cardboard brick wall <laughs> that they stuck into slots on an old wooden stage and was just in, in a business suite yeah. in the Holiday Inn. People walking down the corridors of the Holiday Inn. Like like they go into a hotel room. It was fucking horrific, and using it worked. the hotel bar. It was yeah, weird, using the hotel bar like you're at a bad wedding. Yeah, you know that that that. Yeah, no I idea did. why that worked, but it did. Um, I did one in Stourbridge. I can't remember if I told you about this. I did a tea time show in Birmingham, and then went to open the Birmingham Glee. Wayne B's asked me to do this gig in Stourbridge, which is part of the Black Country that I've done a gig at in the past, like 10, 12 years ago. I got the train, walked it. All the way, I was like, where the fuck is this gig? It wasn't even in Stourbridge Town Centre, which is small anyway. It's on the outskirts of a pub that randomly looked like it had been closed down by a fire in 1978. But they've refurbed round the back. Again, you know when you're walking in going, oh, it's going to be awful, it's going to be awful, it's going to be awful. And Wayne Bees is there, dead sound. Like, oh, beer garden looks all right. Open the door. Mark Nelson's turned up. We go in. <laughs> like, they've built your dream fucking gig at the back of this pub that looked closed, that's in Stourbridge. I love that. When you are expecting a shit gig and then you get this magical little... Oh, love it. All right. Just help me chew off. What's happened with your ankle, kid? So when Liverpool... I watched the Champions League draw earlier and Liverpool drew Benfica and I jumped up in the air with joy and landed on my ankle and rolled it. That's when you know you're into football. That's true as well. When you're injuring yourself, celebrating... The Champions League quarterfinal? Yeah. Draw. Draw. Yeah. it's. I, I think I've badly sprained it. Benfica are decent, but not a massive threat. They're the best, probably the second best draw you could have got. They might even be the best. Or might be the best. Was either, we Me and Danny Matt went to see Benfica play Man United in the Champions League about eight, nine years ago. Do you remember Gaetan? Yes. Of course, yeah. Yeah. He he a bit of Tell you what, Benfica fans, they look like they're having a fucking great time. Yeah, of course. They're, a Europe, they're an elite European club. They're... Drenched in European history. Eusebio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They've won the European Cup. There's not that many clubs that have. And they're up there. They are, like, it's not a gimme. It's just, you know, it's when when most. you look at the rest of the draw that was in, between them and Villarreal, that's who you wanted. Um, And we've got them. I wonder how it'd be to be in there. I wonder what the Benfica fans would be if you just, if you got a ticket and you were just like, I don't really speak Portuguese. But this looks more for don't support Man United, but it's just I just want to get involved. Do you think they'd be like, hey, it's you, a bell end? I think if you got involved and were like, yeah, right. let's do it, and you went, yeah, do you let, Freddie, let Quinn, me like, Freddie Quinn, like, no, stupid. I don't like Benfica. Because you'd be like, oh, we've got the dickhead. It's like if we were an Aldi, like a Spanish fan, like, oh, can I get involved? You're like, yeah, come on. You know what I mean? Like, you just, you've got, you you've think got so. You'd like think most clubs are just well. Some teams that wouldn't. Like, I wouldn't do it, like, Galatasaray. Yeah, said and No, I don't. Or like yeah. Napoli. I wouldn't do like, you know, one of them. I don't know. if you t- In Naples. I, I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't go near you think Italy You think it's a bit moody? Italy fans are moody, aren't they? Italy, Italian fans are moody. Yeah. I wonder if it, if you actually went to to uh, Porto and... It's Benfica Porto. It is, isn't it? It's ben, uh, is in the ben, city of Porto. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. If ben, it's in Portugal. Yeah, I don't know. Is Benfica a town or just the name Porto of the football club? Porto is in Portugal. Yeah. Or is it Lisbon? Lisbon, yeah. Lisbon. So they're the other team in, in the sport in Lisbon. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you go to one of them grounds, I feel like if you go to one of the Italian ones, they're used to tourists. I bet Barcelona are like, oh, I'm gonna try, off. I'm going to try and go to the Benfica game away. I've got a week off. 
you'll see me in the home fan. <laughs> like, lads, Ole, Ole, Benfica, we've got such a good history. Benfica, uh, we've won the Champions, Champions League, League and not everyone's done that. Benfica, Benfica. we're not in Porto, we're actually <laughs> in Lisbon. Lisbon. Benfica. Benfica, Eusebio used to play for us. That's one of their big songs. That's the really good. Biggest song. Do you remember that one? You wouldn't go to an Italy Italian home game on your own and go and sit with the fans. You wouldn't do that. I don't, yeah, you're not, you're not like asking to sit with the ultras, but I'm sure there's tickets available with like, you know, like the family section. Yeah, I would. Would you not go to They'd like be a behind the wheelchairs like... No, but you, that's what I'm saying. You'd get a tourist ticket, wouldn't you? You wouldn't go in the fucking... The, 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 the Curva Sud. Yeah, you wouldn't go there. You just wouldn't. I would. No, in what? In Rome? Come on. In Lazio, the famous fascists that hate everyone. Yeah. They're so mental, they've stopped games. Yeah. Hey, Francesco, Totti, lad, stop the game. Stop the game. Yeah, we're pissed off. What was this? Yeah, because they're all fucking... Oh, right. I thought you were taking the piss. Yeah. Did you see the Mexico one? What happened? Did you see the Mexico game last week? No. It was bad. People were getting killed. It was literally like a lot of people died at a game in Mexico. Like rival fans just literally just killing just each other. Just standing on each other's head and stabbing each other. Okay. Like Mexico might be getting kicked out the World Cup because of it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what yeah. were they annoyed about? The Arteta money? No, I think VAR. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, I think VAR. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the VAR fee? Oh, that went long, didn't it? For a break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that was 40 minutes. Menthol. I like that song. I'm going to sing that at Benfica. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to let you know about our lead sponsor, manscaped.com, the best in below the belt men's groom. And join the over 4 million men worldwide using men's below the belt groom from Manscaped. And Valentine's Day is coming up. I've got a little bit of opposition here. I reckon we need a new national holiday. I think February the 13th. The day before Valentine's Day should become national. In fact, no, worldwide, shave your balls day. Because let's be truly honest, Valentine's Day, all the bells and whistles of it is for the woman. All a man wants is to get sucked off. And that is only really going to happen if he's got a nice trimmed pubic region. So you need the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 with the amazing uh, Lawnmower 4.0, which is honestly one of the best bits of kit. We got sent them when uh, Manscaped became a sponsor. They're a phenomenal bit of kit. You don't get nicked. You've got a little light on it. It runs forever. You can use it in the shower. You've also got the weed whacker for your nose hair because ladies do not like a hairy fucking nose. You also get extra gifts. There's like a shed travel bag, which is really nice. Anti-chafe, like, uh, what are these? Like, it, like boxes by Manscaped. The boxes are amazing. I actually personally love the ball deodorant and the toner he as does. well. And they've smelled better ever since you started My balls it. smell fucking lovely, mate. Well, no, the guests comment. <laughs> <laughs> look, treat your missus to getting you one of these shavers. Your dick will look better. Your dick will look bigger. And honestly, she's going to want to touch it more because no one wants to touch a messy little pubic region. You've got like leftover cum in it. Oh, it's not God. Good. <laughs> God, no. Really? Is that an issue? Is that the issue? <laughs> Go to manscaped.com for our exclusive offer of 20% off plus free shipping with the code WORD20. What's the code, Adam? The code is WORD20. Shave your balls. Make your woman think you're great. Come in your pubes, eh? Problem. Yeah. Sometimes. Have a wash first, yeah. <laughs> There's only so much shampoo can do. Yeah. Get the lawnmower 4.0. Hack, hack away. It is actually the best thing I own. It is. 100%. Mm. 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 It is very rainy. Oh. <laughs> as a result, I would like to suck your balls in the broom closet. <laughs> balls in the broom closet. <laughs> as a result. As a result. Yeah. Of it. <laughs> Let's very keep the toilet roll as well. Yes. Which will be good for wipe up. We can wipe up all of the cum from off of my body. Oh, you sound so Transylvanian. Party. Uh, Transylvanian Holland. <laughs> I'm a Rotterdam vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Trying too hard with the voices. Um, Okie doke. It's time to have a word with Adam and Dan. Tell us all the problems you have with your friends. This was supposed to be the whole podcast. Shut up, Finn. No. Now it's just the final 10%. We haven't sang that for ages. We haven't. 
I wrote that. I wrote so many songs. Yeah. You've written two songs. No. Three. Yeah. Uh? Agony Adam. Confessions. Right. Confessions. So that's, that's true. That one. You wrote Confessions Part 2 for Russia. You, you just sort of like blurted some stuff out and then everyone else did I've actually got work. a writing credit on the Wombats. Um, Moving to New York. Moving to New York. Moving to... where? Did, but you actually wanted it to be called Moving to... Kegness. Mozambique. Mozambique. Because yeah. I'm moving to Mozambique. Because I'm having call. troubles with my sleep. Adam but Adam. sleep rhymes with Mozambique. Adam. They were fucking idiots. They wouldn't listen to me. Too many syllables, kid. Too to many be. syllables. I'm moving to Skegness because I've got, got problems with the beak. Beak. No beak in Skegness. That's where I'm moving to Mozambique because I've got problems with the beak. <laughs> you wouldn't do that. <laughs> Don't think so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think I might actually become a songwriter at some point. I might venture into that just to stretch my legs into another part of the 7 creative world. 7am, wake up, read a novel, <laughs> write a song. Put it on the made-up bullshit list in your mind. Do it. Love it. It's not beyond the realms of possibility, though, that have a word records is a thing long-term. Finn's the CEO. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like, it is possible at some point we branch out and we start recording music. Is it? Why I not? said this before. Why not? Finn can be the, Finn's there. the music fella. Yeah, Definitely. and I could write. I could write the theme tune. To you could sing, sing the theme sing tune the to the, what to the record company? Because <laughs> <laughs> that if you're in the music ha, industry, ha, ha, ha. have a word records. I you were what were they, when the will they play then? that? When will they play it? We just play it whenever you know, like when you walk into a shop and it goes sing. <laughs> when you walk into the records, wouldn't it be ha, studio? Ha, 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 have a word. <laughs> when you walk into the records studio, have it goes. A word. Have a word records. records is Good the start. Best. Good start. Record that. And then if things take off, you know, maybe, I don't know, I could write for Adele or something. Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah. Good luck with that. What song would you write for Adele? The Oasis Reunion. I could do theirs. The Oasis Reunion. They will do it eventually. I mean, new songs don't they do it every six months? No. Oh, no, they're proper falling Indeed out for now. for a while. Gimp. Who's the biggest do Gimp? you like Gimp? Oasis? Do you like Lil Oasis? Wayne. Right. I could write right. for Lil Wayne. Shut up, Finn. Adele, Oasis, <laughs> and Lil Wayne. One track. One track! Ooh. They can all do a remix. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can I? Hang on. Let, do it again. Shit. So, uh, Harry, uh, our guy that does the. Not Harry Robinson, our uh, talented mate, Harry. Does the music. Give him a clean ha ha have a word music. What one? Ha ha have a word records. Cool. The receptionist is gonna kill themselves in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> to be on fucking indeed again. Cause another receptionist killed them because every time someone's like, Can I use the toilet? Ha ha have a word niggas. <laughs> I don't think that's as annoying as ding. No? That would get fucking... Imagine this, look. Every time someone comes in. <laughs> what kind of weird record shop is this that has got a bell it's over the door? It's a record shop. Is it not? It's a, it's record, a recording studio. It's a, it's a record label. Idiot. See, I'm stupid. Calling it Death Row Records. That's a record company. But with an E, so we don't get sued. <laughs> By Shug Knight. Oh, Snoop Dogg owns it now. Oh, he bought it off Shug. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Been in prison for decades. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because of all because of that uh, speech at that. Um, the that Source fun. Awards, Daniel <laughs> shot Mikel Arteta. <laughs> Fact. That's what started it all off. <laughs> started what off? And then Bill Kenwright got shot. Have you not got any dreams for this company? <laughs> <laughs> you have to add to that, don't you? <laughs> Otherwise, it's one of the gayest questions we've ever asked. And word. have you not got any dreams, Dan? <laughs> have you? I, I want to work in Spain. And I just, <laughs> just need someone to give me the motivation to just get over there. And what I'd like is a pissed up scouser to threaten me. <laughs> Listen, Dan, go to fucking Spain and I'll break your fucking kneecaps with gravity. Hey, Dan, take this to the car, lad. <laughs> it's slippy. <laughs> Fuck it. 5 0. Got no, nothing like on me, mate. Uh, excuse me, why has this lad got a fucking kneecap out of place? I don't know. It was raining. Let's say we get like five years in and we've got 50,000 patrons. Everything's fine. You can tour whenever you want. You can announce phase one, new material gigs, they sell out. Everything's just got a Bloody bit now. easy, right? Go on. Yeah. What, what's the next branch of the company for you? 
Don't. I want to do everything. <laughs> I want the TV studio. I want a recording studio for Finn. Totally. I'd like a gift shop. <laughs> a gift shop would kill it. I want to make candles. <laughs> I want to make them. I want to sell them. With me raping a dog. Oh, yeah. That, that's got to sell. Yeah. The dog rape candles. They're not at both ends. Right in the middle. Yeah. Your cock and the dog's tail being right at the same time. Oh. Too far, Carl. Where's the wick? Hang out of his ass. <laughs> Goes up and down. I think we should. Uh, music, our own TV studio, theatre, Hathaway Airlines. Adam. Don't look at me. I'm not okay. And you're all looking at me. Look. Just say the word, Dan. <laughs> Want to get a plane? <laughs> Uh, as long as you keep the fucking receipt for the plane. <laughs> Have we got a single receipt? Steve, uh, Steve, can you go through the receipts? Can you imagine the accountant, like, the VAT, like, trying to do the VAT, and we're, we're short one, £2.8 million, pound <laughs> Boeing 737 receipt. Where did you put that? Oh, shit. It's in me old jeans. <laughs> oh, a nightmare. I'm going to have to pay the VAT on that. I've got to claim that back. <laughs> Yeah, got, lads, I'm all in. I'm all, I love have, you having these ideas. It's great. And I put them in a special file <laughs> look, that I call that I call the search bar. And that, look, I've written it all down. And that's all your ideas. <laughs> that's how I've written it out in Bouncer. And then I close the window and we all just move on with our lives. <laughs> um, Ask a question. <laughs> Question, Carl. <laughs> I think the music should be a bit of a giveaway. These aren't questions. <laughs> Fucking lit. <laughs> oh, by the way, um, if why do you, we have enough guests on? If, I don't know. Only doing it. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, tweet or email us asking what a lid is and what wag wag is, we all think you're a bad twat. <laughs> um, <laughs> And if one more person emails, <laughs> bit of a controversial one, uh, when you're two inches in your mom, man, and your dad's dick is two inches in your head, what are you going to do? No, the next person says, uh, can, off, we, get, can we get the audio uh, as an can early Can we just release? answer that once and for all, the two inches in your mom and your dad's two inches in you? You obviously shag your mum. It'd rather be like someone who shags their parents and is still straight <laughs> than get bummed by your dad. She's dead, thank God. Have a word. Pussy's better than cock. <laughs> Well, I disagree with that. How dare you? I find that really offensive. Why? That's just for you, perhaps, sir. For you. I was venting an opinion. Yeah. He oh. doesn't have to start everything with, in my opinion. It's obvious as his opinion, because he's offering it from his own face. You pedantic. Little. No. Can't. Oh, pedant. Uh, have a word time. Ask one. Liam Paul says, can you have a word with Carver being a homophobe? I think I already have. Uh, Liam Paul says, have a word with my missus. She admits that this is serious stuff, guys. Okay, okay. People dying in the Ukraine, but we've got our finger on the pulse. She mixes ketchup and pulse. mayonnaise Beggar sauce. to make pink sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute rank. Cheers, Lids. Her name's Abby. Beggar sauce. And she watches, so please name and shame. Absolutely not. What's his name? Uh, Liam Paul. Liam, you're the gimp. Yeah. You're pathetic. Oh, this is backfired on you, Liam. Each to their own. It's burger, the start. it's burger sauce. Unless it's not described in on the menu that they're mixing, then it's bad. If this is just called burger sauce, like if you ever go to a restaurant and it says all burgers contain tomato, lettuce, and burger sauce, that's what burger sauce is. With a little bit of vinegar, it's mayo, and tomato sauce. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind that. It's lovely. He's a gimp, Sean. Paul. It's just tomato with mayo. It, no, it's Liam. Middle name Sean. Liam Sean Paul. Um, yeah, I prefer them separate though. Weirdly, me too. is that me just being a bit pedantic? No, but together it's just burger sauce. <laughs> I don't want any more guests on. <laughs> I want Shane Gillis on, and then no one else. <laughs> Shane, can you come and do the pod? Yeah, you can't do it, right? Well, no more guests. <laughs> Let us know when you can do it. One guest a year, Shane Gillis. Please do it. <laughs> Try again next uh, year without without asking him to do Trump. Um, all what's right, favorite, cool. What's your favorite? Sauce? I prefer them separate as well. By the way. I do. Yeah. But she doesn't. And I don't know why. This is one of those things, right? He needs to fuck where, off and whatever die. Your, whatever your preferences are. Whatever your preferences are. Why is he... Who's he to judge? Why is he forcing it on here? Yeah. Don't eat it then. 
Yeah. Liam, you little shit. Just cunt. let her eat whatever she wants to eat. You eat whatever you want to eat and just don't bother. Choke why, on why it. Why are you bothered by this stuff? Choke There's on it. There's bigger things going on in the world. I'm sure you've got some serious problems. Drink some Ukraine sauce. When was the last time you had a clear admin? When was the last time you had nothing to do? Get some fucking stuff done and stop worrying so about you the colour of Liam. the sauce on your missus's burger. That is a no, <laughs> you've missed He's a £10 patron now. No, no that's not for keep fuck. it. Don't kick. We want it, Liam. I'm on your side. Sort your priorities. I've, I've had the piss to take. That's Liam. That's backfired as badly as anyone's have a word effort ever. That was such a considering that was condiments that you got both barrels from the fucking comedian and the PA. Pow. Fucking maggot. Um, I've had the piss taken out of me for putting mayo on a burger. I thought that was standard fair. Oh, uh, on beef. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I like a little bit of it's mayo. Okay. I like cheese. it as well. It is rogue, but I'm with is you. It rogue? Yeah, it is rogue, but I'm still with you. And in this new era of burgers, um, it's becoming a lot more accepted because in these like almost famousy places, they're just fucking wazzing everything together and see what works. Do you know what I mean? They're the ones who start going. Do you know what? You can have mayo on beef. It used to pay like traditionally with chicken. Yeah, it's like red wine and bolognese. Yeah, of course, for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But That's, now, yeah. But I now, mean, if you put ketchup on a chicken burger, that's more maverick than going mayo on a cheeseburger, isn't it? Uh, I mean, I mean, I would be like, what? Do you know what? I think about five what? years ago they were on par, but the mayo on the beef burger has become more popular. So I think it is more of a maverick move. But I reckon long term, I'm talking hundred years time, they'll be doing that everywhere. Hot sauce, the, that the red stuff that you just got for your Domino's, yep. a little bit of that quite on a cheeseburger, yeah. I put hot Love sauce it. on scrambled eggs. I put hot sauce, sauce on everything. Hot sauce on cheese on toast. I mean, yeah. it makes it Dan, well better. Dan, what? Do you go black pepper on cheese on toast? Yeah. A little bit. Oh, yeah, salt yeah. and black pepper on everything. You put salt and black pepper on everything. What's your favourite sauce, Dan? Any sauce? Hot sauce. It's it's the Red's hot sauce. What's Frank's, your favourite Frank's sauce? hot sauce. It's the best one. I've tried to make my own. I've tried to make my own hot sauce, and I did quite well. So if you're, on, on a takeaway menu, you go, you go hot sauce all the time. No. no, 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 no. That's not, that's not no, the that's question what you What's your favourite sauce? No, no, but that's a different question. If you could only... It's like the... Um, it's the most versatile If one. you're doing desert island sauces, what sauce are you going to use forever on the most things? You'd probably go ketchup. Sweet But if I can use everything, if I use four sauces on something, what's... That's a bit maverick, but I think hot sauce is my favourite. Yeah, garlic like, mayo's up there. Garlic oh, mayo, sweet chilli is going to be up there. Sweet chilli's up there. And this is where we go back to the mint yoghurt on pizza that you hate. Brown sauce. Oh, I'm, so not, I'm not against it, but yeah. I have it on all breakfast stuff. I can have red with sausage as well, but bacon is brown sauce. Hot sauce on a bacon sandwich with a bit of Tommy Tommy, tommy Arto works as well. Uh, tommy Arto? Tommy Tommy, tommy, tommy Arto. Arto. Tommy, tommy Arto. Arto. Tommy Arto. Tommy Arto. Oh. No, he plays for Benfica. <laughs> oh, Tommy Arto. Oh, Tommy Arto. Um, yeah, I will try that. Hot sauce on a bacon butty. But I am very accustomed to me brown sauce on me bacon butty. Just dealing with the big issues, aren't we? Taking them down one by one. But Liam, the point is, Liam. Here, Liam is a fucking bitch who needs to pull his fucking cock out of his own ass and have a fucking way with himself. Oh, Liam. Yeah, pull your cock out your ass. Liam, it's been as, it's gone as badly for you as you can imagine. It must feel bad. Like, this. he's like, fucking hell, I'd left turn on that one, Liam. Kim. Um, Stephen James says, wag, wag, lids. I <laughs> wonder where it's from. Watch the fucking program. Shit, Ed. Uh, Got to have a word for you here. Program. Ugh. Myself and two of my oldest and closest friends are in a Facebook group chat. I always send messages. Facebook group chat. Seneca I, uses that. It's pathetic. Well, she's the only person that I like that does. Oh, I always send messages into it and ask all sorts of questions. And they never seem to reply. Or they are very slow. As in a few hours later. The problem is both of their girlfriends dobbed them in and said they are both always on their phones. So, do you need to have a word with them for being shitty friends and to start answering when something is asked and not just when they want to know something? Or, do you need to have a word with me for being a needy cunt? Is this Gimp Week? Yeah. That's Stephen James from Cardiff. It's like Shark Week. What's this? Both barrels? <laughs> You're about to get them, Steve. <laughs> Stop being so insecure. Put your phone down and fucking shove it up your ass. Group chats are funny for when something happens. Group chats are great for when something's happening. Like, Facebook... Facebook group no, chats? No, no, no. 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 It should be a WhatsApp group. It's WhatsApp or nothing. Yeah. But like a group chat on WhatsApp can be really fun, hilarious, if something's happening. 
but just putting fucking sounds like he's putting a daily riddle in and getting pissed off when yeah. no one's doing it. I think Stephen. I think your chat might. This is hard to say because I'm like, uh, I think your chat's shit. I think. I think you. Plus, how many is it? Is there three people? Yeah, that's not a group chat on for Facebook me. though. A group chat. If anyone's messaged me on Facebook, I, I, this sounds like I'm being harsh. Unless you're like one of my mum's friends or like my auntie types. And I'm like, yeah, of course they don't know better. I do think a bit less of you. Like, why are you making me go on Facebook? I don't even want to be on there ever anymore. And yeah. you get ping. Someone doesn't know what year it is. So I, you all know how bad <laughs> I am for being on my phone. We do. Right. So I check, I have like a, a rotation of things I check in the same order. So I check WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter. I've had such a good day. I've loved today. I'm really making myself laugh. Go. Oh. I absolutely agree. But I, I check Facebook Messenger maybe once a day. Not like while I'm checking everything else. Oh, I've got notifications on. I need to take them I off. I don't have notifications on anything. Yeah. No, because no. once I'm on my phone, I'm not coming off it. Do you have banners on? Uh, not on Twitter. No, not I mean, on so, Instagram. I mean, I mean randomly, home screen banners. Do you know what I need to change? It's from being a comic on the Facebook uh, comedians page. I got so much work off that. That I was like, yeah, that's the one thing that can send me push notifications. Like, guess what? But Facebook is so shit that I need to take it off. It's such a pest. Now I've just got WhatsApp. I'm going to have just WhatsApp. Because WhatsApp's everything now. Even when people text, I'm like, wait, wait, what are yeah. you texting? Yeah. I only text him. We text each other. But, but why uh, not WhatsApp? I don't I, know. I, I don't know. It's separate. I'm not changing. No, no, do you know what it is? I think it's a safety net. Because it's separate. Because I know if I'm texting someone, I'm texting him. And yeah. also, I don't get notifications from me WhatsApp, but I do from me text. So okay. if I get a text, I right. know it's important and it's from him. Yeah. I, I tell you what, and it helps really for weird. our group because obviously I miss a lot in the group and it takes me a while to get back to stuff. But if it's really <laughs> urgent, he'll text me, check the group. Oh, I don't, I didn't know you were doing that. I don't ever think you're that, that slow on the group. What is weird though is that we, as a WhatsApp, my I used to hate, I used to love a cleared out inbox. Now I realise that that is impossible we have merch ideas merch we have have a word we have have a word with matthew we have the one i know you have 13 WhatsApp it's me and i'm not in all of them but i know something's going weird when adam just messages me on whatsapp and it comes out adam row lad i'm like oh private adam <laughs> oh my god i'm getting private row what's going on oh it's like enough did you message about me no not very often okay yeah when we do it is about you it has to be otherwise i'd be in because it doesn't have usually, a way of It's usually like 20% question mark. Should yeah. be 25, 30. Uh, that's not what's in play. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want any more guests. Let's bit them off. They're not good. It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> not good you know what have a word is my least favourite bit and I was like well, I don't know you're like well no <laughs> Dean Marlin Marlo it's not Marlo. a fish Marlin it's Dean a, Marlin that's a fish isn't it hey Dean Marlin Dean Marlin striker for Dortmund yeah he's a striker for Dortmund <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> Harland no Daniel Marlin that is sorry oh yeah fuck oh, it is yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's, it's also spelled differently it's Christian Pulisic um <laughs> All right, Lids. Chelsea. Did, did you used to play for Dortmund? Yeah. Lars Ricken. Stick that up your <laughs> fucking vagina. I know Lars Ricken. Mikel Arteta. I'm from before. All right, Lids. I, I want you to have a word with my brother. When his... <laughs> <laughs> when his baby was born, the baby used to suffer from constipation. To get around this, my brother used to lube up a cotton bud and shove it up his son's arse. He claims... <laughs> He claims a doctor told him to do this. <laughs> Have a word and tell him he's a weird cunt and it's not normal. That's from Dean Mallon, Dortmund. Amazing stuff. <coughs> nah, you got to do what you got to do if your baby's fucking plunged up. <laughs> Stop use your finger. <laughs> this is just like taking your missus's hair out the sink, isn't it? No, it's very different. <laughs> when you're fucking lubing up and an ear bud. <laughs> I want to get the baby. When we say lube, was he like just spitting on it or are we talking KY jelly? Oh, oh my, my God. God. If he spat on it, he forward that to the police. They, <laughs> baby oil has got to be used for something. How old has your baby got to be before this is illegal? Well, my baby's just about to turn one 
And I reckon there would be a look on his face like, the fuck are you doing, kid? <laughs> and I think then it's too far. When they're all like... Is it ever illegal? What? Is it ever illegal to cock butt someone's asshole? At some point, that it becomes a sexual assault, I think. Even to help them? Yeah. They've got to ask for it. Maybe they'd have to articulate. I did not want to be fucked with oh, them here, but... Constant. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> You just gotta really like. They obviously, they can't speak, so you just gotta take it from their eyes. Doesn't consent. <laughs> My baby's got way more fun recently, and uh, if he gets like a crusty, Laura tries to like get the bogey out of his nose, and he's like, ah, ah, ah. the fight in him is unbelievable. I cannot imagine a Q-tip going up a bum hole. Like, it's just not gonna Rapper. go well. <laughs> this one, ice, ice Q, ice Q-tip. So uh, yeah, I, I think, I think it is a bit weird, but I don't know what you meant. It What's the alternative? Just let the baby explode of poo. Explode of it poo. Get toxic shock and die, Dan. What? Yeah, the baby would get toxic shock and die. How badly do you have to be constipated? This is what happened to, to my rabbit. I've told to you. <laughs> what? It couldn't shit and it Why blew didn't up. Finger your rabbit. <laughs> no, my rabbit when I was a kid died of constipation because it got all bunged up in the arsehole. No. You found it. No, I didn't. I've oh, no, told you this all this before. before. I think you've been lied to. No, I haven't. I, I found the rabbit dead, covered in its own shite. What? So the shit, the shit exploded. That, that no, that happens. So in the humans. rabbit was constipated. Right. The rabbit was full of shit. Yeah. I found the rabbit the next day, and because it had died, and your whole body sort of goes, Hurr. all the rabbit, <laughs> the rabbit just. <laughs> Emptied out. He was in bed and he just said, oh. <laughs> The rabbit's dead. Like, oh, fucking rabbit's that, dead. That is a body failing to do its job, isn't it? God, you're so constipated. You're going to have to ga die to get rid of this. Yeah. Yeah. So, how big was the shit? Instead of droppings, it was like, it was like two rabbits worth of shit. Like <laughs> there was how much shit was it? About three and a half rabbits. <laughs> that fucking big, big rabbit. Yeah, my rabbit killed itself by accident. Now how unnerving would that be if there was like an Alsatian shit next to your rabbit and the rabbit was like, so tired now, boss. Axe Vicky shit. If you had to shove a wrapper up your ass, who would you pick? Uh, if I had to shove a uh, hot. Cha! I'm. Ow. Kane's in the car. It actually made sense from the Q tip. Q tip's very American, isn't it? It's what they call earbuds. What do yeah. we call them? Earbuds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> It's worked great. What what rapper would you show up your ass if you had to? If you had to pick a rapper, uh, Kendrick Lamar. He seems like I'd be able to manage him. Eminem. I mean, statistically speaking, probably got the smallest dick. Oh no, I mean the whole. What, rapper. You're going dick first. What? You're not bumming him. Oh. It, you're sitting. You're literally disappearing a whole rapper oh. up your bum. That's silly. That doesn't make any sense. Be humble. Sit down. <laughs> I'd That's go. a Kendrick Lamar song. Snoop Dogg. Oh, fuck off. Well, because he's thin. Try to get any. I go Snoop. He's a tall man. I don't know how we've reached a new level of stupid with today's episode. What do you mean? Wait till Shane Gillis is on. <sighs> how long have we done? Let me know when we can finish. This has been so good, I don't want to ruin it but with a crap one. Would you shove an island boy up your ass? Would what? what? Would you shove an island boy up your ass? They've got mad air then. I don't want any, I don't want them anywhere near my person. Or You're too house. tired and you need to not talk again for the rest <laughs> of the episode. One more. One more. One more. We want one more. Just one more. Don't want to go home. Ba -da -ba -da. Show them ba -da. the this way is from to go Gary. home. It's from Gary. Gary you? Gary Doesn't Mac. say. Gary Anderson. Wag wag lids, can you have a word with my missus or me? Obviously her though. I went on a night out in Sheffield on a night out and drove there. Since I'm from Liverpool, stayed over in a nice B&B on top of one of them cunting hi hills. <laughs> went on a night out. Well and good. When I woke up in the morning, I went to go home and my car had gone missing. I went into the B&B I stayed in to get help and then came back to where my car was for me to notice at the bottom of the hill with police surrounding it. I quickly ran down. The police thought I was, that I'd been drink driving. Had to get the B&B to vouch for me. I tells the missus what happened and she said I never applied the handbrake properly. Ah, upset me, nasty bitch. And now she doesn't believe me. Big up the pod. That's from Gary the Cunt. That's I. I didn't read the uh, surname. <laughs> Gary the Cunt. Right, is he French? Do you think he's lying? No, that's the look. Do you think he's <laughs> lying? What? Do you think he's lying? Was that or an do you think he's had a similar experience a, to you? I think he's a horrible shit, and he's being mean about something 
that I suffered. Was that an Arthur and a Mayo? That's the question. Well, wouldn't that just be apt if it was? If it was an early noughties. So you know when you found the car, one, five, six. when you found the car at the scare, was the handbrake off? This is how annoying this is. You didn't check. I wish, I'd, I, wish I could tell you I didn't check. Convenient, don't it? Those who don't know the context of this, Dan uh, did a gig in Sheffield a while back and had a very similar experience to Gary here when he went to do a gig, left his car on a hill, and when he came back, it was at the bottom of the hill, having ran into a main road and hit a skip. You ruined this part. This is a really fun episode, Gary. Gaz. Who's Gary? Fucking rat. <coughs> one more, yeah? One more. That's not having a dig at me. Um, yeah, just dig at him. I hope this last one to dig at you. you Wag Wag Lids. I once wanked off <laughs> fucking National Express. No. Wag Wag Lids, I have a somewhat serious have a word. Me and my missus of seven years have had this argument for a few years now about whether we christen our child when we eventually have one. She's absolutely adamant that we have them christened just because she is, and it's traditional, some bollocks, and I'm having none of it. She doesn't even go to church. She doesn't believe in Christianity, so I genuinely don't understand why the fuck she wants to do it. Excuse. Have a word with her. For for me, lids, or have a word with me if you think I'm over exaggerating the whole thing. Catholic Thanks, skills Dom. are the best. Catholic skills are the better skills. That's why. Yeah, it's quite com- quite a common. Problem. It's a common thing in Liverpool. This yeah. people christen their kids. First of all, when you christen your kid, you get to have a little party. It's fucking great. There is nothing better in the world than a Sunday afternoon christening and drinking session. It is the peak of alcohol consumption. So better than wedding. Yeah, wedding's too long. No. Yeah, wedding's lengthy enough. Christening's oh, fucking man. great drinking. It's phenomenal. Indoctrinate children that can't fucking say oh, no. Oh, just, no. You, you get a fucking old so paedophile sh- to throw a bottle of water on your kid's head and then you never let him see your kid again. It sounds great. Just to facilitate afternoon drinking, get an old paedophile <laughs> to wet a child and go, you two domine fucking padre, Benfica fan. I am a paedophile. And I like wetting children's head. You get to go to a better school. That's it. In Liverpool, he it's doesn't a care. Practice. Yeah. What, what would you be like? Because you're very atheist. What if Laura wanted the kids Christian to go to a good school? Well, which uh, Etta goes to a, a C of E school, but luckily, and it's the, the only one in the fucking village. So, but uh, yeah, I find it massively frustrating. But again, all I'm bothered about is dog porn. So. I'm not going to do anything about it, but I find it ma- it's so entrenched in our education system that like this church is the, 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 the. yeah, but just don't be it's the martyr. Shite. Just shut up and get your kids. So oh, it is horrible though, isn't it? It is, yeah. But he's not going to change the world, is he? He's writing into us, so he hasn't got much fucking vim. Just fucking let your wife do whatever she wants to your kids. Smile while it's happening, and occasionally she'll suck you off. Suck a dog off in Parliament Square. See what happens. Yeah, no more talking, Carl. Um, <laughs> you really I, should leave that down. I, no, I, I, don't you. I'll I, shout. <laughs> oh, I shout. <laughs> Carl says. Go on, we'll just... Hey! Yeah? Hey! God, I love these mics. Did you just hear a distant racist? <laughs> um, oh. I hate it. I'm with you, Lid. Dom, it's fucking horrible, but they're right. You've got to play the fucking game. Don't, don't try and be some fucking hero. Your wife wants the kid christened. For whatever reason, just take the fucking Sunday session with your mates. You can invite all your mates under the guise of giving your wife what she wants. And we know what women are like. They're very insistent. She gets what she wants. She gets what she wants. She can't argue with it. And you get to get pissed on a Sunday afternoon from like 11 in the morning until whenever. And you don't need a babysitter because you get to take the kids with you. Yeah. You, there's not, this is a win win for you. You don't give a fuck. You don't give a fuck that the baby's going to be christened. Nothing's going to change. You can still tell the kid all day, every day, that Jesus is a gobshite and God's a fucking bell end. And that, that, that everyone all within day, the church. Every day. All day, every day. <laughs> By the way, lad, Jesus was a gobshite. Yeah. Tell him it's all bollocks. Tell him it's Sorry basic. to interrupt the class, little Tommy. Remember <laughs> it, kids. Don't let these fucking pedos in. Bollocks. All day, any day. Yeah. 
educate him on the, got hi- the history of child abuse within the Catholic Church oh, so he okay. knows to avoid priests. Let him know that religion, organised religion, is essentially one big tax dodge. You can educate your child whilst also taking advantage of the system. Yeah. And you get to get pissed on a Sunday with your mates. Or Muslim faith school. That's the other option, isn't it? Convert yeah. to Islam. Yeah. What's a Muslim yeah. christening? What did he pour on you? <laughs> Not good for a fucking bevy, that one. <laughs> You're welcome. It is no. if they're liberal Muslims who just don't really care about the... Uh, Age old laws around alcoholism. Right. Not loads of them around Muslim faith schools, is it? You know, don't get I'm a lot. Just don't, and th- and I there's one used to be generalized and get us in trouble again. Yeah. There's a PTA <laughs> fundraiser that I probably wouldn't do. The Muslim faith school. I'd probably leave that one for Freddie. Um <laughs> Yeah, I can't get a I can't get a closer. Um you've really got to go on the piss though. I'm 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 warming to Adam's argument. But you have to, like, it can't be like, oh, five o'clock, I'm a bit hammered, I'll come home with the wife and kid. No. You've got, like, the boy. She goes home. If she wants to go home, she goes home. Where are you going? Tom, where are you going? Like, I have forsaken my fucking atheist beliefs. I'm going town and get a shit face. What's a food bar in Sterling? Go Sterling. I'm going Sterling. The fucking kids in there. 11. Motherfucking fit. (laughs) What? What? I think that's it. Apt end. I've added more tour dates. Adam Road or Cody can pay forward slash shows. Oh, fucking death row. <laughs> what is it? Gone, sorry. I talked over it. Cardiff, second date added. Oxford, first date added. Birmingham, fifth date. There's a lot. Just go to the website. I, I, I don't know. You know where you want to come. It might be there. I'm uh, trying. Thanks to everyone who's bought tickets for the new comedy club in Chester. It starts June the 11th. That is soon to sell out. We've got August 20th, September 24th, and November 26th. Great bills. Cannot wait. And it's comediansclubchester.com online to go and have a look. What a fucking load of fun this was. Yeah. You got an early night in you? Is that what's coming? Have you got a gig? Got a gig. Got a tour? Tour date, fuck. Bye. Bye, Bye Felicia.